Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the playoff round for the 101st United States Open Championship between Retief Goosen of South Africa and Mark Brooks of Fort Worth, Texas. The players will play 18 holes at stroke play with a low score determining the champion. In the event of a tie after 18 holes, the players will return to the 18th tee and continue in a sudden death format. Thereafter, if needed, the players will continue play on holes 10 through 18 until a champion is determined. Mr. Goosen has the honor. Play away, please. And we welcome you back to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Monday morning, just about 16 hours removed from one of the most bizarre 72nd holes in major championship history. What lies ahead? We can only wait for this 18-hole playoff. But Retief Goosen from South Africa still with a chance to win the U.S. Open Championship. Off the tee at the first, the par four, 454 yards from the elevated tee. Solid strike going right down the center of the fairway. Good way to start here. Good swing. And now Mark Brooks, who thought it was all but over, had his locker cleaned out until Goosen's misfortunes at 18. He's got a chance at age 40 for his first open title. This two right down the middle. Both players off to a good start. So this 18 hole playoff is underway after the strange occurrences at 18 yesterday. ESPN and the United States Golf Association present a national championship. Today, an 18-hole playoff in the 101st United States Open. Welcome back to Southern Hills Country Club, hosting this championship for the third time, but 1958 and 1977 was hardly anything like 2001. What happened, and Johnny, we've had a little bit of time to sleep on it, perhaps gain some new perspective. Do you have a fresh look at what transpired at 18 after having some time to think about it all? Well, it really comes down to nobody, the players don't like to talk about it because they have a round to play to, uh, to today, but uh, the bottom line is that was U.S. Open nerves, big time, no doubt about it. Goosen could have putted that putt, I guarantee you, 500 times, and he wouldn't have three-putted at one time normally. It just was the easiest two-putt I have ever seen. It was slow uphill. The second putt was dead straight. Just Cole pushed it. He said he misread it, but that was a fib. And the bottom line is uh, Brooks didn't have the most wonderful three putt himself. And then, of course, Sink probably feels worse than anybody because he misses that little guy like this, and he didn't know he was going to get in the playoff. But that's why, kids out there, you've got to treat every putt special, and you can't expect anything out of this game until the last putt is in. So there was a lot of lessons to be learned, not only from the players that were here, but players who were watching it and and golfers all over the world, there's a lot of lessons to be learned from that experience. It's almost what's great about this game. You learn something new each and every time you see it, especially in the heat of major championship play. Well, Goosen off to a good start today, despite the woes at 18 yesterday. And setting up his second shot out there is Roger Malpe. Raj? 187 left to the hole. Hole cut in the center rear portion of this green. Hole playing downwind. This is an eight iron. He's hit the ball very, very high, just right of the hole. It doesn't carry. I think he might have got that a little fat, John. That's not where he wants to hit it. He's got one of those feeder shots down that quick green going away from you. Mark Brooks has been very impressive. Tita Green, Roger. Um, you just couldn't hit it much better. Third and fairways hit number one in greens and regulation, hitting 53 out of 72 greens. 
For those of you out there, that's a pretty good plan. 53 out of 72 tries in the U.S. Open pressure and tight fairways and long rough and fast hard greens. Uh, a lot, a lot yes. of people, Johnny, might think oh, wait, the pressure yeah. would be oh. on Retief Goosen. Because after what happened at 18 yesterday, really the only way to somewhat erase it is to win the championship. Because if he doesn't, yeah, it's going to be another Vanderbilt otherwise. It's a nine iron from 167. You started the ball right. It's not really hooking much. That might chase all the way to the edge or over. That's a pretty good miss, though. If you're going to miss the green, that's a very good spot. Well, you've already heard from Roger Malpe out there with the final pairing and our tower announcers today, Gary Koch and Mark Rolfing. We're also a part of uh, the bizarre play yesterday at the 72nd. Jimmy Roberts. We're all, we've been talking about this uh, championship all morning long. The executive director of the United States Golf Association, David Fay, will be handling any rules interpretations that uh, come up. Johnny, you alluded to uh, some of the numbers this week turned in by Brooks, third in fairways hit, number one in greens and regulation. And uh, look at Goosen. He's gotten it together a little bit in fairways hit, fourth in greens and regulation. So I guess no big surprise that these uh, two men are in this playoff to determine the champion. A little advantage of Goosen, of course, to make up for the greens and regulations, uh, 19th in putting versus Brooks uh, higher, 46th. So. Uh, the bottom line is they both played well and putted well, but uh, these playoffs, Roger, uh, a lot of times you end up with a big spread. Uh, historically, it, it seems to be that way that one player will show that he's got it and the other guy will fade away. But um, it sort of seems like it ought to go down to that last green on Roger and see if they can make up for what happened on 18. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I wondered, you know, how uh, Retief. Goosen would, would spend last night uh, after what uh, transpired on the 18th. And and uh, what I was really most concerned about was how many phone calls the guy would have to handle. But uh, his management uh, team uh, direct, got those phone calls directed their way. So uh, he just had a little room service and stayed in. Just like he's been doing all week long. If he loses this playoff, he might be doing a lot of staying in the next several months. And he's got a very quick bunker shot here, Johnny. This downwind, downhill, this will really trickle out. Just needs to land this ball just a very short ways under the green. Just let her release. Looks pretty good, Roger. Looks absolutely perfect. Is that going to go in? Oh! What a shot. Came about as close as you could without dropping in. I mean, you talk about a perfect bunker shot. This ball's down in the hole. Watch it. It's actually inside the hole and decides to come out of there. I'll tell you what, Goosen's been doing it all week long. And after watching that one edge out, not much reaction at all. You'd think he'd show more. Gee, Maybe he's just about emotioned place. out after yesterday. And he's been that way all week, uh, Roger. I think that's just his demeanor. I was talking to Peter Oosterhaus, and he was saying that uh, he's a little different guy, whatever that means. Well, he'll, he's quick with a smile, but it's uh, you wouldn't call him gregarious by any stretch of the word. Uh, pretty, pretty reserved fella. So, uh, Very we haven't friendly. Seen him leave that character, yes, but we have not seen him leave that character at any time. Uh, through good or bad. That'd be nice to see them both really play great today. Maybe shoot close to par, which would be hard to do in a playoff. There's a lot of letdown that they have to overcome, don't you think, Roger? You just don't program an 18 hole playoff at the end of a long, grueling week. And so they're basically just back mentally just trying to make up for the physicality of it all. Well, they won't get many better chances at winning the National Open, John, so you better gear up now. Yes, but. Back uphill slightly. We should move a little to his right. Leaving the flag stick in, which is a good play. A little bit of a tap stroke. Looks good. 
man. How about both players uh, catching a piece of the cup almost on their up, third shots. Almost both of them picked up speed when they hit the lips. Both of those shots. That thing when they hit, watch this. This hit goes down in a little bit, but it's carrying more speed than Goosen's. But look at this. That actually was down in the hole also and spun it out down the hill. So that'll get their blood pumping a little, huh, Roger? Both of them. Both got a piece of it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they weren't just doggy little shots. They were exciting for us anyway. Makes you wonder what lies ahead in this uh, in this Monday in Tulsa. This is a big putt, though, right here, right out of the bat. bat. I, I think what happens the first few holes, really, when you're going sort of head-to-head, -head, Roger, is just totally key. Well, I couldn't agree more, John. And watching them both warm up, they were at opposite ends of the range. Uh, <laughs> one with a right to left wind, and the other one with a left to right wind. Uh, Hitting each other as they pass, right? But I was I was uh, surprised at how uh, calm they both are. Uh, they both seem uh, very much ready to play. I didn't see much in the way of nerves from uh, uh, from either competitor. So well, you don't have to watch out for Tiger Woods. That helped. That's one guy you don't have to worry about. Pretty big worry gone, isn't it? They know he's not on the golf course today. Yeah, this inside the hole on the right. Yeah. Solid four for Brooks to start. Goosen still has the official par attempt here. How about the comments from Goosen yesterday? I can't wait to get out to the golf course today. I'm looking forward to the opportunity. All of that said after what happened in the 72nd hole. Well, you know, basically the guys are really trained by sports psychologists to keep everything positive and you, you can't blame them, but uh, it'd be nice to at least have a mention of the fact that I had a bad putt, I succumbed to the nerves, and but tomorrow I'm going to knock them dead. I, that's all, all we want really out of these guys. Well, they're headed over to the second, a long par four, Johnny. It is, and it's uh, the hardest driving hole on the golf course. Those trees on the right, you can see, is very narrow, like 22, 23 yards wide with it canted fairway right to left creek is in play we, Goosen got an unbelievable break yesterday and if you can fit it in the fairway with a three wood or a driver then you got a narrow entrance you got a slope off in the left and a slope over well Johnny you mentioned it being a difficult fairway to hit throughout the championship it was hit just 51 percent of the time by the competitors demanding drive just a very demanding hole the second most difficult throughout the championship Played to a stroke average of 4.39. That was quite a break you got here yesterday, wasn't it? Guys? Well, it was. A very poor drive down the left. Hit the tree and actually bounced to the left of the little creek that runs down the left side of the hole. I'm still undecided whether that was a good or a bad break. <laughs> well, he ended up making a par, so. Good score. Yeah. Driver again. This one well right, going way right. I think slightly in response to the left yesterday. Well, that one was both hands on the steering wheel there, John. Yeah, but uh, better than hitting the creek again or near the creek. Roger, the wind coming uh, from the players left again. It is left to right and certainly breezier uh, today at this point than uh, either of the last two rounds. Huge difference in the driving stats between Goosen and Brooks. Uh, Goosen's got Brooks by 23 yards on the driving holes difference, so it's a huge difference in distance. But I like a guy that hits the fairways, Gare. Especially in a U.S. Open, Johnny. This ball going down the left hand side, then moving it over toward the center. Good looking tee shot here. Oh, that is beautifully placed. So at the second hole of the playoff, Retief Goosen in some trouble to the right. Mark Brooks right down the middle. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the playoff. 101st United States Open Championship. We're at the par four second. Retief Goosen in some trouble to the trees to the right. Roger, how bad is it? Well, he has no opportunity to play at the green. Huge trees uh, in front of him. Uh, uh, he can try to keep the ball down uh, under some trees and advance the ball. Uh, oh, gosh, he can probably make it go forward 120 yards or so. 
uh, but he has no opportunity to put it on the green. His other option is really to go sideways to the fairway, so I think he'll try to advance it, or he may even go down the seventh fairway, which is next to us. That's another possibility, and then try to wedge across the huge trees uh, back over to the green. Well, Goosen, 32 years of age, plays most of his golf on the European Tour, where he has four wins. The 2000 President's Cup team last fall. Five times he's represented the Dunhill Cup or played in the Dunhill Cup representing South Africa. And we've talked about it all week long. Very easygoing demeanor, reminiscent of his countryman Ernie Els. Yeah, we, we've called him the new easy. I mean, it's been that. Much of the same feeling, same swing, similar physical stature, big shoulders, pretty large man, and uh, he has just been uh, just literally unflappable, and, and except for the 72nd hole. Did shoot four really good rounds: 66, 70, 69, 71. So those are all rounds that could qualify for being an Open champion, which he could do this today. You could just see his eyes there. He actually went through all the alternatives. He looked low, he looked high, he looked down the seventh fairway. As Roger Malby pointed out. We need them at least 10 yards. Roger looks like he is taking perhaps the most conservative. It is certainly the most conservative and the safest route, uh, Gary. The difficulty now in pitching back to the fairway is the fairway is going to run away from him. It runs right to left from the tee. So he's now playing to a fairway that's down grain and downhill. And you have to think this early in the playoff that this is a good decision. Certainly don't want to make a big score. Bogey, no, that's acceptable. I'll tell you, Gary, it'd be a good shot if he gets it in the parallel. That, that's a good shot. In the left center of the fairway. Well, you know, we've talked about how determined Mark Brooks is. Take a look at this focus in his eyes and determination. You talk about a guy, watch it, watch this now. Now start watching those eyes. Just take a look at this. Look at this right here. You think that there isn't some, <laughs> you better be in the fairway. We talked about how he might have the makeup for major championships. I mean, this would be his eighth career win, but he would have two major championships within the eight win on the resume. And he just seems to kind of, once he gets a taste of it, a sense of it, kind of the, the old bulldog on the pant leg, he's just not going to let go, even though he was given the gift yesterday to get in. But uh, be interesting to see how he responds to this second opportunity today. Of course, we're not playing match play. It's stroke play, but in reality, it's almost like picked up one stroke right here on Roger. At this point, he's got the advantage. This is six iron now from 179 yards. Front left hole location. Anything to the right of the hole is safe. This is right of the hole and safe, but not quite enough. Not terrible though, huh? No, if you're gonna miss, John, that is certainly where you want to be. Left is much more difficult. Just didn't draw, Roger, off that hook fly. Yeah, the wind wouldn't let it, John, just held it. Gave it the draw follow through Gary, but I think the ball was gone before it turned the club over. Yeah, amazing how that happens sometimes. Just an inch late, no yeah. big deal. How about Goosen, Roger? What does he have for his third? 165 yards left. He's looking at the trees left, trying to determine just how strong that wind is. It's coming across here. We're kind of sheltered in this fairway by the big oaks. Yep. And not left of the fairway here, so you can't always feel the breeze and how strong it is. This is an eight iron.
This ball a little bit right of the hole. Oh, what a shot. shot. Well, guys, yesterday wasn't the first time we'd seen short putts missed with major championships in the balance back in 1979. Masters. Ed Sneed experienced a stretch of three straight bogeys in the final three holes, capped by a five-foot miss for par, which would have won him a green jacket. Instead, he wound up in a three-man playoff won by Fuzzy Zeller. Earlier, he talked with Gary Koch about his feelings at Augusta 22 years ago. Thanks, Dan. Ed, back in 1979 at the Masters on the 72nd hole, had you gotten down in two, you would have been the champion. What was going through your mind at that time? Well, Gary, you know, circumstances are different. I didn't three putt the last hole, but what I did in bogeying the last three certainly qualifies as a disastrous finish. Y you know, you, there are different kinds of pressure in the game. Um, it's sometimes you get that nervous, shaky pressure where your, your hands are jittery and the, and the putter shakes a little bit, and, and that hits everybody from time to time. I wasn't going through that in 1979, but I certainly feel, looking back on it especially, that I was feeling the pressure of the tournament. I was a little tight maybe, maybe not quite as free as I should have been, and it was a difficult thing. I don't think I lost my head, but, but nevertheless, it is a pressure situation always at the last hole. Now you watched uh, what happened yesterday on the 72nd hole. What do you think happened to Sink, Brooks, and especially to Goosen? Well, to start with Mark Brooks, I was watching Mark play all day, and he had a long, tough putt, uh, something he could have three-putted at any time. That, that was a difficult putt. Uh, when Stuart Sink missed his first one, I can see an element of distraction. I'm sure that he thought he had lost the tournament. I think he probably felt some jitters and had all the, the air out of his balloon. Now, with Retief, I don't know. It's hard to speculate as to what was going through his head. He obviously hit that putt too hard, perhaps lost. He thought maybe he had had it won. I don't know, but, but that is a punt, putt that will haunt him if he doesn't win today. All right, let's go back to the playoff, and we'll rejoin Ed in just a couple minutes. Okay, thank you, Gary. Always. Uh a bit speculative when you're talking about the uh, what's going on inside of somebody's head, but it's an interesting uh, discussion. Always is. Well, the bottom line is, is he hadn't hit a putt with any hands the whole week. He gave a little pop on 18, but that's almost expected. How about this, Roger? This one right to his left, and it's quick when he gets in the area of the hole. Really well played there. So Brooks should have no problem tapping in for his par. Roger, I can't help but think if Retief Goosen were to make this one, this would be two very miraculous pars in a row that he has made here at the second. <laughs> no doubt, and uh, really not a hard putt, Gary. It moves just a little bit to his left. The kind of putt uh, that a right-handed player likes should be about the right edge or so. Slightly downhill. For uh, 71 holes of this championship, uh, this man's putting stroke held up awfully well. It's uh, mechanically very sound. That's true. He had no three putts through the first 67 holes, Gary, and then the last five holes he three putted on 14 and 18. But um, you know that 18th hole is tough when you have to two putt to win anything. And um, I could see what happened on the first one, but the second one he really should have made that putt straight in. Beautiful rhythm in his stroke keeps the putter very low back and through. There it is. Another marvelous par at the second for Retief Goosen. He'll remain at even par, as is Mark Brooks through two holes. Well, Johnny, what about the next hole, the par four third?
So Retief Goose with the honor here still at the third. Roger Maltby, the right rough has been a popular spot for players who have missed the fairway here. And Retief has been in that right rough uh, certainly on Saturday and yesterday. Uh, got a very good break. The ball hit the wall to the right here. Caromed off the trees back into the very, very short rough. So electing to go with an iron today. Wind against and from the right. He has made four pars in his first four rounds here at number three. Definitely not playing for a fade, guys. This ball turning Check. right to left Hold down on. the left hand side of the fairway yep, should Check. be okay. We started to notice yesterday that this third green had a little bit of a brownish look to it. It got very firm. And Playing a second shot, Roger, into this green, you pretty much have to play it out of the fairway if you're going to hold this green. Wind about the same, Roger? Uh, it's blowing harder today, John. It's breezier than it has been uh, either of the last two days, but uh, it is, again, from the same direction that's come all week. Mark Brooks now with the driver. And he is turning this ball from the right side, right down the right center of the fairway. Beautiful tee shot. Well, Brooks out there in the fairway, a good distance ahead of Goosen. Let's continue uh, Gary Cook's con conversation a little bit earlier with Ed Snee. Ed, after your playoff loss in 79 at the Masters, how did you feel? And how do you think the three guys who were involved in the activities yesterday feel? You know, Gary, after it was all over, I, I think I was numbed by the experience. I mean, I don't think it really hit me for a while. You want to be philosophical. You you don't think it's going to bother you, but there was definitely a feeling of numbness. As I look at the the three players, uh, I think they're all feeling a little numb, especially Goosen and and Stuart Sink. Um, I think today it'd be very very hard for Stuart Sink to watch that playoff. He, his emotions will he, he'll be thinking about that little putt that he missed. Um, I think it'll be hardest on Goosen. Uh, it's going to be hard on two of those guys, for sure. Uh, the winner will never think <laughs> twice about what happened at the 18th green. Would you say that uh, your loss at the Masters in 79 is something that, that still stays with Ed Snead? Does it haunt you to this day? Well, I, I wouldn't say that it haunts me, but does it bother me? You bet it does. Uh, I, I've thought many times about what I would have done differently had I had it to do over again. Uh, and, you know, I tried as hard as I could. It bothers me, but it, it never embittered me. And I think that's the important thing that these players have to take away from it. They can't let an experience like this embitter them. They're professional golfers, and they'll go on to win again. All right. Thanks, Ed. Back to you, Dan. Thank you, Gary. And thank you, Ed Sneed, for uh, relaying some of your thoughts at a, a very difficult time in his career. And you got to wonder about the flip side with an Ed Sneed. I mean, if that goes in, he's got a green jacket. All of a sudden, he's a Masters champion. And you go on with loads of confidence from there, Johnny. Who knows what could have happened in Ed Sneed's career from there. On the flip side, it's something, uh, as we've reminded him here again, 22 years later, we're talking about it still. It's nice to hear a nice, honest response like Ed's instead of the cover up stuff we have a tendency to hear on the PGA Tour sometimes and instead of just admitting certain things and going on. But uh, yeah, momentum, good breaks. Tiger talks about even needing good breaks uh, to win championships and a uh, little luck. That putt at 18 for Ed Snead, it could have fallen in. That was not that bad a putt, really. It's sort of just one of those things. Ed did pick up four more wins after the Masters loss. Ed was a heck of a player, still is. So Retief Goosen will play into this third green first. Roger, what's he got? It has a good angle, certainly from the left-hand side of the fairway. Hole cut on the right-hand portion of the green, 20 paces on. Has 175 yards to the hole, playing uphill slightly. And of course, uh, the thing that players really have to concern themselves uh, with here, Mark, is any miss right or long because the green runs away from them uh, from that position. So got to keep it underneath the hole toward the center of the yeah, green. Roger, you'd like to leave yourself with a fairly short birdie putt if you could. We've seen a number of long putts here that players have had trouble with. Tiger Woods uh, in the opening round had about a 35 foot putt that he left eight feet short here at the third. So you'd like to get it inside the 20 foot range at least if you could. 
Goosen has not hit a green in regulation yet. Of course, neither has Mark Brooks. He had it just in the apron at number one. This is a six iron. He's hit this ball to the right, and the wind's not moving it left. So he was short right at the first in the green side bunker, and now short right again at the third. Can't tell if it buried, I guess, my guys. It has a good shot at doing that because it came straight down, John. The wind kind of upshot it a little bit. It was coming in very soft. Not the easiest hole location for a hook wind and a hook flight, huh, Roger? Yeah, and that's what Mark Brooks uh, plays. He's a almost always hits the ball right to left. And, uh, and like you say, you just you, for him to get the ball closer, he's got to aim it off the green on the right to play his shot and land the ball very near the right side of the green, which is a risky shot. So I think I'd look for this to come in left of the hole. Pretty big advantage for him, though, Roger, having hit it driver off the tee. He's got it 35 yards closer than Goosen did. And he's got a shorter club. Now. This is a nine iron. Pretty good looking shot if it'll get to the hole. Yeah. It's the 101st United States Open, a playoff to determine the champion, Mark Brooks and Retief Goosen are even. Welcome back to Tulsa, Oklahoma. This is the third shot moments ago for Retief Goosen, the par four third. You can see a fried egg in the bunker. <laughs> Once again, Retief Goosen has a rabbit out of a hat and a chance to save a par here at the third. Roger, you have watched Retief Goosen all weekend do this. It seems like he does it time after time. Lots of came around the greens. He's been fortunate. To, he's had the right kind of shot for the right type of situation. As here, his ball plugged in that bunker but had plenty of green to work with and he's made <laughs> with the exception of the final hole yesterday virtually every putt from this distance this putt shouldn't do much downhill slightly uh, I think we'll go a little to the right but I think he has to keep it inside the cup folks at home we should remind once again this is not match play it is stroke play the player with the lowest score at the end of the 18 holes wins Miller, sometimes that can wear a little bit on a player, don't you think? If you're Mark Brooks watching this, is thinking how much better tee to green that Mark Brooks has played already than Retief Goosen? Especially he misses us, huh, Roger? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's like I was thinking of a two shot swing here and get nothing. So if he makes this, it won't bother him too much, but uh, that's a good point. It's pretty simple. Yeah. Pedal, make one side, go on the left, shift the ball a little bit to the right. Kind of like hit firmly. This for a birdie three to get Mark Brooks to one under would give him a one stroke advantage over Retief Goosen. So as they head over to the fourth tee, you can see there Mark Brooks at one under par leads Goosen by a shot. And here is the fourth Johnny, 368 yards.
So it is a birdie hole if you hit the fairway. That's the if, and you get a good lie in the fairway, not some little Mowgli downslope. Another warm day in Tulsa. Temperatures expected to reach the low 90s, but as all championship week long, it could be a lot worse as you look at the hole location at yep. the fourth. There's a hump right here, so if you hit here, it'll spin right down by the hole. And uh, I'm not sure why this fairway, Roger, had so many humps in it. Is there anything like it on the golf course that you can think of? Uh, there really isn't, John. It's kind of just moguls and humps and lumps. I don't know if it was a design feature or if that happened to be here, but you find it nowhere else. Well, 13 does have a a lot of little stuff down there in the bottom of the sway of the par five, but uh, this one is really unusual. It's like it uh, had a little Scottish influence or something. Well, as you can see the line there, Brooks has had the fourth well under control this week. Has played it one under. He has the one shot lead over Goosen as he has the honor. Being aggressive with the three wood, Roger. He just throws the club down that line so well. That, that's just going down the left. Good bounce, a little ground fade. Nothing wrong with the ground fade, huh, Raj? That helps. <laughs> Especially the ones that are going left. <laughs> yeah. He's going in a little left, but yeah, I don't even think he knows if it's in the fairway or not. He can't see again, Raj. No, he cannot see the fairway. They cannot see down into that low area. Well, Goosen wants to make a little easier work out of this fourth <laughs> after what he's been through so far. Well, maybe he'll just one putt every green. He's one under on it as well, just like Brooks. Third iron off the tee in four holes. Hard swing there, Roger. That's going down the right center. Leak into the rough. Just on the edge for Goosen, trailing Mark Brooks by one in the 32nd playoff in U.S. Open history. Second round 64 with a very similar hole location. Johnny, this was his second shot. And look what Brooks was able to do with it. This was quite a flurry of birdies for Brooks as he birdied five of the first six holes in that second round. Yeah, that hole location, if you hit it just short of the hole, it's stiff. Yeah. If you hit it next to the hole, it's stiff. And you hit That's it past, it's stiff. Big flag's going left. It's a decent little eight, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's just a regular eight. Regular eight. Well, he has 137 yards to the hole and his ball on a little bit of a shelf here on the left-hand side. This is about as level a lie as you can get on this fairway, Johnny. Ball just slightly below his feet. Again, the hole location is, uh, it's not ideal for his draw, but it's not bad. You can see the hole, I'm gonna mark the flag stick right there. This Good ball distance. just left of the hole toward the center of the green. Oh, a too far to come back off that ridge today. That's a very quick putt. Now Goosen. 133 yards left and a bit of a down slope. Also the ball a little bit below his feet. Uh, ball nestling down just a little bit in the intermediate rough here. The limbs that we see in the shot are not in play? No, they are not, John. Piercing yeah. ball flight. Yeah. Sits up on top as well. Well, the traditional 18 hole playoff being decided here in this U.S. Open. As you take a look at some of the other playoff formats in the majors, they uh, differ a little bit here, David Fay. Well, uh, they do. Uh, the uh, PGA went to four holes uh, following the British Open, and uh, I must say the Met Open, uh, that's where I come from. We started that in 1976, and it's very exciting. But the USGA is very comfortable with its uh, playoff policy for the Open and the Women's Open. It's a game of 18 holes, uh, the importance of it. I recall in 1990, Hale Irwin making that dramatic putt at Medina. He finished over an hour ahead of Mike Donald. And we feel this is a national championship, and to come out and resolve it in something less than 18 holes is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's our preference not to do it. Well, there are uh, 
number of varying opinions on playoffs in 1913 U.S. Open playoff. This is what Harry Varden had to say. I think it was a mistake to decide such an important event by the outcome of one round. Luck of the game usually equalizes itself. I think that in golf it may easily require more than a round of 18 holes. Now a 36 hole playoff might be really interesting. Well, maybe they he was just upset. Maybe he was just upset that he got beat by a 20 year old amateur named Francis. We met. Well, uh, Johnny, you know, I think the better the better the player you are, the more holes you want to play. But the U.S. Open was resolved by 36 holes. Uh, in fact, in 1931, George Von Elm and Billy Burke went 144 holes because after the first 36-hole playoff, they were still tied. But again, they out. Again, they went. Wow. Now, if this obviously is deadlock after 18 holes, then it turns into a sudden death situation. We saw that uh, at the Women's Open uh, a few years ago at Black Wolf Run when Jenny Shasiraporn and Sayree Pock weren't decided after 18. And Ernie Els, his win at Oakmont. That's right. Back in 94, he and Lauren Roberts. Yep, Colin Montgomery didn't make it through, so he didn't. He was in that playoff. Right, but it was he a didn't tie playoff originally. Oh, correct. Okay, Roger, let's get back to reality here. Now, this is about 35 feet downhill off the rear tier of the green. Comes across a slight ridge and it's downhill. But in the area of the hole, John, it starts going back uphill with the slope that comes off the front right bunker. So. Overall, a quick putt, but uh, I don't think lightning fast. The first part of the putt does not break right, right? No, it really doesn't. I don't, I don't see a whole lot of break in this putt. Maybe a little at the hole, uh, just to the right, just a pitch. Just a little. Of course, uh, Gooseman's an even par, and Brooks minus one with a fine birdie on three, and Neither one of them that have had a two putt, all one putt so far. So I guess they're making up for 18th green yesterday, right? Pretty remarkable, especially uh, yeah. the play of Goosen coming off of that debacle. <laughs> Three cutsy pars, boy. Okay, just cozy it down there. It's not that dangerous a putt. Let's see, pretty straight, 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 straight. I am thinking about moving right by a half an inch. It'd be easy to overread that, Raj, and that's just what he did. Yeah, that putt certainly should help Chief Goose in that. It's a very similar putt. You certainly saw the putt was not all that fast. As a matter of fact, the ball slowed up rather abruptly. Pretty makeable putt, huh? It is. It just doesn't do much, John. Uh, I think it looks uh, probably a little harder to the viewers around the green than, than it really is. The fall of this green, actually, uh, the upper tier, I have it falling. I uh, um, can't show the direction here, but uh, you can tell it's pretty much in the direction he's going. You can see the upper tier I have falling slightly this way and down here just slightly that way. You got two different fall lines. There's a tier in between. So overall, overall maybe inside left. Just touches it, playing a pretty good break. But in the hole! They, just, they just needed us to caddy for them. Right? Tell that was never going to come back after watching Brooks's coast down there. So, still, it should be another four for Goosen. There's his caddy, Greg Herman. He's going to get behind Ratif on this one. Yeah, both caddies, uh, Mark Brooks' caddy, Paul Fusco, uh, is very involved in, in Green's reading. And like you say, uh, Greg here with Retief, Greg Herman, also proactive. Four fours for Goosen. Caddy, real positive behind you, Roger, because some days he's the only one that really cares if you make it. 
other than yourself. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Well, Brooks has his uh, family here with him in contrast to Latif Goosen, Brooks's family, his wife Cynthia is here, his two daughters are here. Goosen, uh, just his agent, his caddy, and himself, his whole family, and his new wife, not here at Southern Hills. Darn clutch. Got to be uh, proud of their play so far. Got the memories of yesterday and the letdowns, if there were any, out of the way. They get set to tee off the longest hole in U.S. Open history, the par five, which measures 642 yards. Need to hit two good shots to put in position for a full spinning wedge, and the whole location today is right in the front middle. There is the tail of the tape. 642 tops the list, but Mark Brooks, you can see, has had, had his problems. He's had only six holes of bogey or higher in this entire championship, and half of those have come right here at the fifth with those three bogeys. The drive fits his shot, sh shot shape. It's a three wood, Johnny. As the wind's got this ball a little bit. It's going down the right hand side. It's going to have to hit soft. No, it's going to get in the right rough, and that's pretty thick rough over there. Popped up a little bit. Uh, but he's thinking, ah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, you can see it. Of course, you got 642 yards to get down 36 feet, so it's not as dramatic as it might look. It's uh, been a pretty steady fall. But uh, the downhill tee shots. Sometimes are the hardest ones to keep in play. Yeah, you got a wind is a factor, like Raj says, is pushing the ball to the right. This now along the line, taken down the left hand side. The fair wind's cutting it over to the center. Good looking swing. Good shot by Goosen, showing no. No effects at all after what happened at about 7 o'clock local time last night. Tulsa, Oklahoma, the playoff continues to decide the 101st U.S. Open. Well, after this bit of open business left here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, the golfing eye of the world is at the Westchester Country Club where Tiger Woods makes his next stop. That's the Buick Classic Thursday on ESPN from Rye, New York. Tiger Woods will be there along with Sergio Garcia, Justin Leonard, BJ Singh, just a few of the names that would be looking to take the title away from last year's winner, Dennis Paulson. Thursday, the coverage begins at 3 o'clock Eastern time, 2 oh. o'clock out here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Nice course, Westchester Country Club. It's got a bunch of easy holes and some of the hardest in the country. Weird course that way. There is the situation through the first four holes of this 18-hole playoff. Brooks with the one-shot lead over Ratif Goosen as they play this long par five fifth. Roger. Now well, Ratif Goosen in the right rough, and he has drawn a good lie. Ball is not sitting down as deeply as I've seen many over here. Yeah. Or excuse me, Mark Brooks' ball. Uh, it hit. And it. so he should be uh, he should be able to advance this ball really as far down the. Fairway as he might like. I think he can hit a four iron out of there, something like that, John, or maybe hit a 220 yards. This is sort of a one in 20 lie. It's one of the first you could see it when it went down the rough. It popped up and then just sort of suspended. You've got to be careful, probably soling the club, I would imagine. Well, Roger, I know you said Goosen. I know you meant to say uh, Brooks, because that was the first fairway that uh, Mark Brooks has missed. 
over there now. Good angle, Roger. The rough. Uh, yeah, good angle from the right-hand side. He's playing straight down the fairway, so uh, uh, again, uh, could have been much, much worse. I think he's got no problems at all. You can see the wind direction on our beautiful American flag. Yeah, yeah forward. Left to right. Uh, yeah, see how it sits. It's great. Okay. Have to look at it. It's fine. Because I'm thinking if you hit a two eight or a four iron, it goes like two ten. Right. It leaves you a pretty long shot. Doesn't it? Uh, how was that late? No, yeah, well, at least you won't get the oh. See that better than forward. That's a wonderful exchange. That, that's how valuable a caddy is, you know. The players say, hey, give me more club. And, well, he still might give him a little more club, but, you know, the caddy's got to be part of the team uh, to keep a player from making mental mistakes or trying to get too much out of a shot. <clears throat> what do you think he's hitting there, Roger? Like a three iron? Well, they were talking about a four iron, John, and trying to move it 210 yards, which would leave them 155. They're now 365 yards away from the hole, so right now just trying to calculate what length third shot they'll have left. Well, the first club was a four. I was wondering if he went to a, a three or the five. I believe this is a four, John, and he's pulled this ball. It's turned over a little bit into the left rough. Well, he might be okay where the people, the fringe of the people have been walking, so uh, not a very good shot. Uh, just you got to really keep that club from twisting when you're in the rough. That's the main thing. And down at the bottom, an impact, firm up that left hand and right hand, and Keep that club track and square. Chief Goose is now 355 to the hole, so again, just laying the ball down the fairway. Just left to right wind or slightly helping? Left to right, slightly helping. He's back about the shot. I really don't know why. But he can take the ball down much further than Mark Brooks could. He should have a shorter third shot, certainly. This ball starts down in the left center, cutting to the center of the fairway. Good shot by Goosen. Seems to have the advantage here at the fifth. Well, earlier in the telecast, we uh, mentioned. How about the lie for him right now for his third at the fifth, Raj? Well, the grass is reasonably long around his ball, but it's in an area that is a crosswalk and it is very dry and wispy, so I don't think it'll have a huge effect on his shot other than he shouldn't be able to get very much spin on it. I think it's the big concern that it'll hit a knuckleball. Yeah, I always think that uh, when you get dry brown Bermuda about that length, especially with the old V grooves, Roger was like, okay. watch play. out. In fact, you know, just minus I don't think 20 I can yards. Play non -heat. Right. You know, they have 162 yards left to the hole. Right there. You're better off in the right bunker, probably. Right. 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 You got it. Better off in the right bunker? He's favoring the right side, huh? 457. Certainly a simpler shot from there because he's playing uphill, John. You don't want to miss the left because then you're playing at a green that runs away from you. So why is he thinking about hitting the right bunker? I think they're talking about if there's going to be a mistake, where are they going to make it? And certainly he's going to try to, I think, bounce this ball into the green. And there's a chance it could kick into that bunker on the yeah, right. Yeah, mainly across. As we said, uh, wind is left to right almost directly and a little helping from this angle, all right? Uh, just slightly, John, yes. This is an eight iron. And this one is headed left. Catches that front green side bunker and left hand side. So he's got no hitter going on this hole. Three best shots. Flies three in the bunker. Well, this has got an opening, Raj. He does, only 127 yards to the hole. Just a pitching wedge from the center of the fairway. I think he's probably going to try to, in an ideal world, start this ball maybe 10 feet left of the hole and let the wind move it a little bit. He can stop it, no problem, right? Oh, certainly should be able to, I would think. Yeah. Like flag stick is right here, and Roger's saying he's going to start it about right there. Did he come 
over there? Yeah, he started to way left at the left side of the green, wind pushing it a little bit to the right. Wow. Kicks out just short of the green as we continue the 18 hole playoff from Southern Hills. Well, this fifth hole continues to cause problems like it has all championship long for Mark Brooks. This is fourth shot at this par five from the bunker, Roger. Well, the green runs away from him. He's got about 25 feet of green to work with, but uh, a very good bunker player, Mark Brooks. His technique is just wonderful, and he makes a nice little bump at the bottom. He's, through his whole career, he's been a super bunker player. Played here. He can't believe he can leave it short. We're going to take a look at this action right here. See where he's aiming. He's aiming about 20 feet left with his hands. Picks it up, nice hands. Just lets the club come down very effortlessly, folks. You don't have to go in there flailing away at it. Just watch his head, nice and steady, up, down, and he stays down. You see how he stays down until the ball's hit, and then he comes up. See out of this five foot deep bunker, see where it went. And Retief Goosen now has selected a putter. Ball oh, some 12 feet, 10 feet short of the green. It's very smooth. He comes, he has to come uphill that 10 or 12 feet to the green, and then the green starts to work away from him. So as opposed to trying to chip the ball and land it on the green to a surface that runs away. He's going to use putter and I think this is probably a, a very prudent choice of clubs from here. Been very successful from his putts from off the green this week. Maybe better than anybody we, I've seen. It was a beautiful play up at the 11th oh, hole yeah. par three that he up that big bank showed great control. Overall, what does it do, Roger? A little right? A little right, John, yes. Houston has played the European Tour since 1993. He has won before. He's won four times on that tour. A number of other victories uh, on his resume. 35th on the European money list, but again plays the bulk of his golf abroad, not here in the United States. Well, he's won the French Open twice. He's got an open next to it. <laughs> Tied for 10th in the British Opens in 97 and 99. Tied for 12th at uh, this U.S. Open at Pebble Beach last year. And a look at what he's done on the European yeah. Tour this year. And 10 starts, three top tens. Did have the best finish, the tie for fifth last week at the English Open. But again, uh, nothing as spectacular uh, as his position has been this week in this championship. You know, you can remember whatever you want about this Open, but the bottom line is these guys shot four under par at Oakland Hills under pretty good playing conditions, pretty tough playing conditions, and they deserve to be here. So remember the good play uh, at Southern Hills here. Southern Hills, I'm sorry. I'm getting ready for Oakland Hills. So Brooks concentrating on his par attempt. Roger. Yeah, this putt could move a little bit to his right, not a lot. Kind of a tricky little putt, really. Just about left hand, you're just inside the corner. Good par for Brooks. And he remains one under. Goosen still with a shorter par putt upcoming. The reason why I might have mentioned. Oakland Hills and the U.S. Amateur will be there next year. We'll be covering it, and I'm going to be there, so I'll be ready to say Oakland Hills <laughs> next time. Well, it's just about exactly. 
exactly the same wing putt he had for his second putt at 18 yesterday. And very similar putt as well, as far as break is concerned, but it's inside the cup. Five straight cars for the South African. Remains one behind Brooks. As they go over to the par three six, Gary. Dan, the par three six. Southern Hills throughout this championship, playing to a stroke average of just over three. And I think club selection will be critical here. Measuring 185 yards today, but uh, again, we're playing slightly downhill. And Roger, the wind has been helping the last couple days. Uh, still that way today? It is. It is helping, and it should be a little bit from right to left. And this the whole location sets up very well for Mark with his draw a shot shape so I would sure. think he could put this ball at the center of the green and turn it a little bit to the left and have some pretty good results. Brooks has been playing uh, Gary the part of three is minus four this week and uh, producing plus one so that accurate iron game of his is paying off. Now he's referring to the flag itself blowing out to the right, which is kind of a fooler. He's expecting it to be a little bit the other way. Disconcerting when you're planning to play the wind for right to left and you look at the flag and it's going the opposite way. Hard to commit to the shot then, huh, Gary? I would think very difficult. That is a common characteristic around Southern Hills, though, is the wind swirling, especially around these greens that are all protected by the trees. Get word he went back to an eight iron. And this ball, the right hand side of the green. Safely on, a long way from the hole. A difficult putt to judge the speed as it comes up and over that ridge that the hole was cut just over the top of. Never seen a championship, Gary, when there's so many white colored shirts. I can't imagine why they're wearing that color. Can you? <laughs> Might have something to do with the heat and humidity, Johnny. Just everybody's going white, it seems like. Hey going left, Roger? No, that's very high, just right of the hole. Oh, good shot. Good shot. Well struck iron shot by Goosen. Well, Gary, we've seen quite a few nicely struck shots at the six, but still 364 is in this open championship, Johnny. Uh, pretty impressive play. Yeah, of course, the golfers are getting better all the time and more of them, and uh, conditions were good. Rough wasn't too tough, and uh, winds weren't too high. I've seen it windier here. So, but minus four to be in a playoff isn't exactly killing them. Sixth green, Mark Brooks will be first to putt. And Roger, uh, with the exception of the 18th hole yesterday, Brooks' uh, distance control on putts of this length has been extremely good. It certainly has. He's been uh, very efficient, certainly in all areas of uh, short game play that I've seen. This putt now slightly uphill. We'll move some from his right to left. Not a difficult putt speed was. There by Brooks swinging the putter, trying to get a feel for which effort needs to be used to get the ball to go the distance he wants it. The 
Reese looks good. Oh. Just seemed to straighten out right at the end. Just straightened out at the very end of the fight. Sixth hole was very favorable to Retief Goosen yesterday. Hole cut way over on the left-hand side of the green. Goosen some 50 feet or so from the hole. Off the fringe. And right in front. 32. So Roger, I would uh, suspect that Goosen had uh, watched the tail end of Brooks's putt and May have learned a little something. Well, he might have, but this is a little bit different angle. Here he's putting from behind the ball, and I do think this putt will have a little movement to the left. Uh, as to whether he keeps it inside the hole or hits it at the right edge, I think it's a function of how hard he chooses to hit it. It's not a hard putt at all. That's for birdie two. par after six. Some excellent play. And they'll move a short distance over to the seventh tee. It's a 382 yard par four. Awkward hole in that the hole dog legs to the left. But the fairway slopes hard from left to right. Most of the players will be taking an iron right up into that area. There shows the reverse bank. Want to hit it about 230 yards off the tee to the top of the hill. Leaves a relatively short second shot into a very nicely shaped green. Today's whole location over the bunker on the right hand side. This fairway has been hit more often than any other in this championship over 72% of the time by the players. And Johnny, I think the real function of that is every player that I've seen has hit an iron off the tee. Uh, there must be also enough uh, room on the right that the balls that do go a little right just barely hang in there. Well, I think that certainly occurred after the rain on uh, Thursday. In the early part of the week, any ball in the right center of the fairway was going to trickle through into the uh, intermediate cut of rough at least. But uh, after the rain Thursday, the fairways did soften. And Don't you think the wind, the prevailing wind, helps really shape this hole nicely? No question. Right. Coming out of the right, yes. Yeah. I mean, it makes that dog leg way easier off the tee. Let's hit this ball down the right center is turning a little bit. Divot, maybe. Yeah, it looks like it looks like it went into a sand filled divot. It might be very interesting. It might be just enough that it's okay. Just yeah. barely on the right side of the divot. He might right be okay. Mark Brooks also with a long iron. This ball right and staying right. Right rough. Got ahead of it, Roger. So Mark Brooks in the right rough, rough. at seven. Houston in the fairway, but perhaps in a divot. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're at the par four seventh. Mark Brooks right rough with a horrible lie. Just trying to hack it out down the fairway, get it to chase and run a little bit. And importantly, he has kept it left, which will give him a very good angle to this right hole location. Well, let's take a look at that tee shot that he hung out to the right. Watch it. Watch his head a little bit. Uh, he always drops it a little bit. But watch when he goes down. His first movement down, he did a little bit what Tiger does. He drops way down, and then his hands don't release quite in time. Leaves that club face open, and the combination of moving ahead of it and down and not releasing in time 
And then this is uh, the goose and lie. Uh, Gary, he did hit a little fat on one and five with good lies, so could be a little bit of a problem here, huh? Roger, is it uh, as bad as it looks, or is it not not so bad? I, I don't think it's as bad as it looks. It, it, it is in a divot that's been uh, uh, filled as the PGA Tour does with half sand and half dirt, uh, so it's a fairly firm mixture. And he's also got a little grass behind his ball. It's not an even divot, so I don't think he's in big danger of chunking this. Not to say he couldn't, uh, but really the lie is is better than it might seem. Uh, he has 152 yards to the hole. A wind helping a little bit and from the right. This is a nine iron. We'll cut back over the bunker on the right hand side that you can see on your screen. Actually fairly deep in the green and you certainly do not want to be long. He's caught it cleanly. Yeah. It's just right of the hole. And spun it quite a bit. Leaves an uphill putt. Well, let's see how he handles this lie. Nice flex in his leg and knees. Takes a club up right on plane. Comes down pretty abruptly and really stays down on it nicely. Uh, that's good stuff. And look at the hands forward here. Back in a stance a little. Make sure he gets the ball first. Watch the leg action and the knee action, how smooth that is and how he turns out of the way and keeps that left wrist really solid right through impact. Well, Stuart Sink came uh, very close to joining this playoff. Missed this short bogey on 18 last night. You may think he might be carrying some extra baggage with him as his career goes on, but not if you listen to his post round comments last night. I'm not hanging my head one bit. You know, I'm not going to look look back and say I missed a two footer to to get myself into a playoff in the U.S. Open. I'm going to uh, look back and say I made a great effort from 12 feet to tie. Again, Johnny, it sounds like a lot of, I guess, self hypnosis, if you will, but that's the way Stuart Sink sees it. And that again was his try for a par, which uh, at that point when he missed it as his family looked on, he thought he had to make that. And that would be a thought that went through your mind because of Goosen just 12 feet behind the pole. Well, he could remember the great birdie shot he had at 17 and also how purely he hit that putt at 18, the first one, but the second one, you can't feel, there's nothing you can think about that's good on that putt. I mean, anybody that thinks good on that one is playing the wrong game. So all of them uh, three putt at 18 at least these two guys have a chance to try and exercise any kind of demons out on the golf course. Stuart Sink is uh, out of the mix and just has to live with it. Gary Roger now Mark Brooks now with his third shot and uh, as we talked about with his bunker play I've always felt Mark Brooks very good with the little wedge shots and Johnny I think a little bit of that's a function of you know his golf swing is a lot of hands and arms and usually that translates into a good short game. I agree with that. That's, that's a little bit. Let's see. You can't see the whole location very well. I don't think you people out there. But there it is. Back right. This is a pitch from just inside 60 yards. A little bit of a downhill live ball. A little bit below his feet. to hit that just a little heavy for it to release that much. I think you're exactly right Gary. I think he hit kind of a, a chunk roller there. Well ESPN original entertainment presents the season Tiger Woods at the 2001 US Open. ESPN followed Tiger throughout the week at Southern Hills as he pursued uh, his unprecedented fifth major championship in a row. See how he handled the pressure with all eyes on him Tuesday June 26th at 8 Eastern time on ESPN and it has been a while since we have had a uh, playoff the longest span between playoffs nine years from 75 through 84. Well playoffs are a little like kissing your sister so just as soon wait another six or seven years for <laughs> the last playoff of course at Oakmont at 94. Gary. 
sure these two don't want to be kissing their sisters either. So see Retief Goosen has had just seven putts through six holes. And you have to give the guy a lot of credit after missing that very short one to win the Open last night. You know, Gary, uh, I just have come to the conclusion that after seeing all this great play in this playoff today, 18 has to be haunted. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's what I you heard that look theory at. being discussed last night. It's like it's the like there was room. some weird stuff going on there that we haven't just seen any inclination of, not just before this playoff round today, but throughout the championship. The solid play. I hear Jimmy Roberts is working on that very subject. <laughs> Has the ring of an essay. All right, Roger. How about Goosen's birdie putt? Well, good angle to putt from here. I just don't see a lot of break in this putt. It's slightly uphill. It's pretty makeable here. In the hole! Might leak just a little right. Gallery is most likely pulling a little bit more for Brooks, I'd imagine, guys. Roger. I'm sorry, John, did you ask me a question? I was just wondering, you know, the gallery is being very polite, but uh, Brooks, you, I would imagine, has to be a little bit of the gallery favorite, huh? I really haven't detected much of that. I think the gallery has been very even handed. Uh, That's good. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I wouldn't hesitate to think that Mark Brooks, because of living in Texas has a few more fans in the gallery, but uh, they haven't deported themselves in that fashion at all. Oklahoma and Texas get along? Uh, well, <laughs> I think that's a matter of debate. Certainly when it comes to football teams, they don't. This putt now uh, downhill slightly. Should move a little bit right to left. And Brooks also putting extremely well. Just eight putts through six holes. Just to remain at one under and tied with Retief Goosen. Boy, good crowds, Gary. Good gallery uh, has come out to watch this 18-hole uh, playoff on a Monday workday in Tulsa. Crowds all week long, Danny, have been very impressive. It's not a dangerous putt, is it, Roger? It is not, Johnny, no. It hung, it hung out. So Mark Brooks will bogey what has been the easiest par four on the golf course in this championship. Drop back to even par, now one stroke behind Retief Goosen. That is the first lead that Goosen has had in this playoff. And we'll go over to the eighth and join Mark Rolfing. Chief Goosen has played at an even par, one birdie and one bogey in the four rounds. Mark Brooks has parred at all four days, but 470 players have played this hole this week in the championship. There have been just 25 birdies. A lot of up and ends, though, for missing the green that many times to play 3.2, huh, Mark? Well, there have been, Johnny. The thing about this uh, eighth is if you miss it short and right, we saw Mick, Phil Mickelson do it a couple of times during the week. It's not that difficult a shot, but uh, if you go long or if you miss it left, it is tough. It sets up a lot better for Brooks, doesn't it, with that draw shot? Low draw, I believe, is the is the right type of shot. And Roger, the wind is coming from the right now, isn't it? So that should help a little bit. It is against the player's hand from the right, which does help, uh, as you say, Mark, getting to this whole location. But I, you know, you just got to believe if you can get it into the center of this green, you got to be happy. 
We have seen very few putts here this week, Roger, that have actually been from the left-hand part of the green back up the hill. Almost every putt comes from right of the hole here. So Retief Goosen with a three iron. I believe in a comfortable position now. He's got the honor if he can hold it. Well, Mark Brooks just has to watch him play first. Off every tee. This ball hit very solidly at the center of the green. Wind moving it a little left. Catches that front left bunker, it appears. Not sure what he's talking about. Cut forward, I guess maybe the next time the open comes here, Roger, he'll play a cut forward. Maybe that was Mark Brooks. But Goosen now in eight holes has hit three iron shots into front bunkers, Roger. Well, he's been very good out of those bunkers, though, I will say that. Well, this a wood club, uh, I think, is a little bit much. Certainly, if he gets it turning over right to left, I think he'll have a difficult time uh, holding the green. We heard him say that he was going to try and cut it, Roger. Well, he has started this ball at the hole, and it is turning left. Looks like it got a pretty good break there. Hit someone in the gallery. So both players in our playoff miss the green at number eight. Can they get it up and in? We'll find out when we come back. Welcome back. Here's a little inside look for you viewers. This is Mark Brooks's yardage book. We're looking at the eighth hole. He's played it seven times now, including the practice rounds. The little arrows indicate the wind direction, the numbers on the right-hand side, the club that he hit, and the numbers on the left, the yardage to the front edge, and then the total yardage of the hole. So uh, using a little reference from uh, his practice rounds and his earlier rounds here before he making, makes his club selection. Pretty smart, huh, Gary? That's cool. I think that is uh, very well thought out, John. And uh, I haven't seen that too much. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Usually just rely on memory. Memory, but that, <laughs> that's pretty Maybe good Maybe as stuff. you get older, it's better to write it down. Don't you think it's kind of interesting, though, Johnny, that every club you saw there was a three iron or a four iron, and, and now he hit a fairway medal, and this ball not hit the gallery. It would have been long and left. Turned out great, huh? Well, actually, it did, John. He's got a yeah. pretty good lie over here, and he's chipping uphill with plenty of green to work with. So uh, if you're going to miss the green, I think that's about as good a spot as you could. Certainly far easier than Retief Goosen's. Maybe he discovered that. Here the whole jump. Not a pretty good effort there by Brooks, but he leaves it above the hole. Sort of an old-fashioned little pitching motion, isn't it, uh, Roger? Very quickly paced. Yep. A lot Short of hands. Accelerating. Mm -hmm. There is a look at Retief Goosen's ball in the green side bunker here in front of the eighth green. Has a good lie, but a very deep bunker. He will not be able to see the surface of the green at all. You can see it all at the top half of the flagstick. Difficulty here when the ball hits on the green, it will be running away from him and turning to his left. There's a look from bunker cam back toward Goosen. See just how open that club face is. That was really, really well executed. Nice shot. So where it looked like Mark Brooks might have the advantage. In fact, here at the eighth now, Retief Goosen has it with Brooks looking at about five feet for his par. Looked like the landing area for that shot, Mark, was like two feet or something. It almost looked like it skidded just through the apron in front of the green. I mean, this is really a dodgy shot in a lot of ways, but, they, you know, he pulled it off. See if you can see where it lands. 
comes out what appears to be very low, but that's the depth of the bunker, but that thing just barely cleared it. Perfect. I guess that's why they're pros and why they're in a playoff, Rod. <laughs> and while we're talking about it. <laughs> and this, not a simple little putt. Downhill and moving to the right. And I would think if not struck well, it could move right rather quickly from here. Mark Brooks playing in this championship this week, Roger, because of his victory at the PGA five years ago. This was the last year of his exemption for having won that major, and he took full advantage of it. 195th ranked player in the world coming into this championship. But it just shows you, Johnny, what kind of a player he is. He's a tough player and a perfect kind of player for a U.S. Open. Now we talked at the top of the show, Mark Brooks, third in fairways hit, number one in greens hit. And that sounds like a champion, even though he doesn't watch out. He's going to be two strokes behind Mr. Lucen. And both save par, having missed the green at the eighth. And they will head up the hill to the ninth tee. Although I guess we shouldn't be giving Retief Goosen a putt of this length after having watched him at the 18th yesterday. But Johnny, it's just amazing to me that we have seen so many good strokes from Goosen on all the putts except for that one at 18. Well, it just shows what nerves will do. And, you know, once the stage is cleared and you got two putts from 11 feet for the U.S. Open. I think there's an invasion of butterflies. Well, there are some Indian burial grounds in the area here. We're researching to see <laughs> if indeed there's one directly under 18. Yeah. Three bunkers in the first eight holes for Goosen. Three pars. Over to the par four ninth, Johnny. Just 374 yards, but plenty of problems there. I thought you're going to have Tiger Woods do this whole description. No, he needs a little love potion number nine after shooting plus four there over the week of his re championship. A reverse bank dog leg. The bunker on the right is 250 yards from there. It leaves the players just um, a short iron, but this hole does play back into the wind and has a big tilt from back to front with a huge tear in the middle. You can see it right there on your screen. All this is. Uh, a bank and if you hit into it, it can run all the way off the green 30 yards. So and then the right bunker is not the greatest spot. And of course, there's two trees there. I'm sure they're going to rename the tiger trees because he hit those <laughs> twice from just little wedges to the green and uh, got two terrible bounces. So he wasn't very lucky this championship. But uh, that bunker you see on the right is uh, sort of the issue. Uh, Roger at uh, out at the 250 yard mark to the end uh, to carry it. So you Goosen topped his uh, tee shot at this hole, too, and went on to birdie it. That was with a wood, though. <laughs> Earlier in the championship, right? He's got an iron now. Just as he played this hole yesterday with an iron, this one turning left, however. That looked like a hook. It is a hook, John. Let's see. Uh, it's still hanging in there. You know? Okay. Landed softly. Yeah, we're just trying to make it more exciting, folks. Well, you could uh, fire up a chainsaw behind Retief Goose and Johnny, and he wouldn't <laughs> change expression. I mean, this guy, <laughs> no matter what he does, there was a little bit of that emotion in the 72nd hole last night. You can feel the wind from the tee, Roger, no doubt? Uh, no doubt, yes. Against and a little bit from the right. Mostly just against. Now this ball turning left, wants it down. Very surprised at how high he teed that ball with the three wood. Because what happens when you sole it on the ground and it's teed that high, you have to sort of flip at it to get up to it, and that makes you hit a pull hook. And that did a big dive well left of the gallery ropes there at the night. Retief Goosen doing what he can to stay in this playoff. He has the one shot lead over Mark Brooks and showing some excellent scrambling from the bunker on the previous hole. 
And we'll be right back to this 18 hole playoff in the 101st U.S. Open. Huge crowds still awaiting the outcome. Huge crowd awaits up on the hill behind the ninth green watching Mark Brooks and Retief Goosen battle in this 18 hole playoff. Goosen with the one shot advantage as they play the final hole here on Southern Hills front nine. And Mark Brooks has driven it well left of the ninth fairway Roger have had a chance to scout it out. Well, I'm just now getting in the area of the ball, and he's not going to have any kind of swing to play toward the green. Huge tree behind his ball. He's going to have to pitch this ball out to the fairway somehow, but uh, no chance at reaching the green in two, I'll tell you that. In the meantime, we see Retief Goosen positioned nicely in the fairway. Yeah, it looks no problem, but um, you do have to get this ball up to the hole. If he puts a spinning shot into that bank, it can come all the way down, not to the crosswalk, but it can come down between the green and the crosswalk. We've actually seen more balls spin off this ninth green, Johnny, than we've seen off the 18th. Yeah. Uh, in case you guys out there didn't know this, uh, in the championship, they deemed that the ninth green and the 18th green were just too severe with the back to front tilt and running at about almost 12 on the stump meter. They decided to drop the stem meter mm -hmm. or move it up to around 10 so it wouldn't spin off and down the hill and it's become much fairer. Yeah, uh, there's no question about it. Whole location is not far from the bottom of that crane. As we pan in, you might be able to see it. And uh, that brings that fall off into play. Roger. Yeah, Retief Goosen, 149 to the hole. Obviously, as good an angle as you can get from the left hand side of the fairway. Yeah. Dead into the wind. Did he get it all? Looks pretty good, John. Left of the hole. Yep, got it up in the top tier. Beautiful shot by Goosen. Yeah, that was great, great distance control. And a smart shot, knowing that Brooks is. Uh, it's quite an obstacle in his backswing. I don't think you, that tree is going anywhere. I tell you though, Brooks is the kind of guy, if he wanted to choke down to the metal, he can hit this father and you think with a real handsy swing, Roger. This is an advantage of his swing and my swing where you can just pick it up real Bye, quick please. and uh, shut that blade. And if he choked down literally on the steel, he could swing almost at the target here. Uh, I don't know where that swing will put him though. Where will it put him with that little handsy swing, Roger? Well, he's got 139 yards to the hole, John. And if he advanced this ball 100 yards, I think he'd be doing a very good job with it. So that practice swing was out to the right. Well, he can he can aim it a little bit to the right and try to hit that shut blade low running hook, but he's going to pit. I just can't see him advancing it much farther now. I don't think the green's in question at all. I don't believe he can get there. That's a shot that everybody should practice sometime. You guys like to take your bad drives in the trees and put them in the fairway and hit from there. But once in a while, play worse ball or put it in bad spots. If you want to be a better player, you young people, go put it in spots like this. See what you can do. That was the danger right there. Didn't take enough loft, Roger. What you have to do, you de-loft it so much by picking it up like that. You have to take like a nine iron and turn it into a six iron. See, he doesn't have enough loft there. He, what he does when he picks it up like this, he de-lofts it to about a two iron. Then, of course, you just drive it right into the ground. So it's a very poor club selection. Should have been hitting a nine iron wedge, and then de-lofting it. Yeah, the problem was the swing became so vertical, John, so much up and down that, you know, it had to be so precise to hit the ball squarely. Uh, and instead, he, you know, just went straight into the turf with it behind the ball. You could hear him catch the bark on the last practice swing. That probably made him uh, feel a little bit more uncomfortable, too, just before pulling the trigger. Newsom could have a nice little lead after the front nine. With a little bit of. This is no bargain here, is it, Roger? He's not taking a lot of time on it. Well, no, he's not. He has a pretty good lie, John. This 124 yards to the hole now. This has to be perfect to hit that top level. The ball's come out very softly. Wants it to get up. That'll go stay maybe. Yep. A little lucky there. So. In three, Mark Brooks is on the surface at the par four ninth. Retief Goosen has a 
pretty good look at a birdie opportunity already with a one shot advantage over Mark Brooks. We are slowly running out of our allotted time here on ESPN, still with about a minute or so left, but uh, we want to remind you that we will take you down the entire back nine of this 18 hole playoff coming up on NBC. That'll be coming up at the top of the hour, one o'clock local time, two o'clock Eastern time to see who will finally claim this championship, the 101st edition here at Seven Hills Country Club. Latif Goosen parred the first five holes before he found his first birdie at the sixth, and he's parred the last two holes to remain at one under. No golfer has had a bigger lead than one. Brooks had the first lead of this 18-hole playoff after the third hole with his first and only birdie of the day to get to one under, but he has since bogeyed the seventh and is having more problems here at the ninth. So, as we wind down here on ESPN, get ready to flip over to NBC to see who will win this 101st U.S. Open. So that'll do it for our ESPN coverage here at Southern Hills. We'll continue over on NBC. Welcome to Southern Hills Country Club, everyone, for this 18-hole playoff in the 101st U.S. Open Championship, 32nd playoff in U.S. Open history, and the first in seven years. And the two combatants, Ratif Goosen and Mark Brooks, are at the ninth green. And it is Ratif Goosen from South Africa who has a one-shot advantage over Mark Brooks. But that could be an even bigger advantage here because Goosen is in good shape, having landed his approach shot at this par-4 ninth green. And Mark Brooks has already attempted a long putt for par and he's still not in so he appears to have at least a bogey so it could be uh, bigger than just a one shot swing here at the ninth. Dan Hicks along with Johnny Miller and the rest of our NBC golf team bringing you this 18 hole playoff coverage after uh, one of the most bizarre endings on a 72 hole on the 72nd hole yesterday in major championship history. We'll explain that and get to more of the details on that in just a moment. But first, Goosen for his birdie at the ninth. The downhill slider goes a little bit to the right. Let's get it going and a little funnel right in there. Good looking putt. Really good looking putt. Wow. Has he been on fire with his putter and his short game? He's missed a bunch of greens, got them all up and in. He's just been amazing. He's making me a believer after that little miscue, big miscue on the 72nd green. He's just been clutch city. So if you're tuning into our NBC coverage here and didn't see what happened on ESPN, you've tuned in at a pretty big swing time here at the ninth. No player has had more than a one shot lead, but uh, Goosen's going to really add to it here because Brooks has this putt for bogey what should drop him to plus one and if he gets it in he would be three shots behind Goosen just like that he had problems off the tee hit his tee shot well left and hit his second shot uh, still didn't get it out in the fairway no he didn't hit a good second shot and I think hit the wrong club trying to use a handsy little swing up against the tree and uh, hit a pretty good third shot and a good lag putt to here for like a two stroke swing for him So Brooks in with his second bogey in the last three holes drops to plus one. Mark Brooks at age 40 from Texas battling Ratif Goosen of South Africa who now has the three shot advantage. Well we mentioned bizarre circumstances yesterday. It was something we really haven't seen ever on the 72nd hole yesterday at Southern Hills. NBC Sports and the United States Golf Association present a national championship. Today, an 18 hole playoff in the 101st United States Open. And still in Tulsa, Oklahoma to decide the 101st U.S. Open. And we go live to the tee at the 10th. Ratif Goosen at this short par four with a three shot advantage. 
Just 374 yards is going with an iron down the left side. Took a very poor bounce straight left into the heavy grass, but then it sits up perfectly. So a very fine break there. You can see this hole. It's a reverse bank dog leg right. You can see we talked about the 374 and players really can hit a three or four iron. Uh, Retief might have gone with a little more club than he needed to. And you can see that reverse there leaning left. The whole location today is um, up there on the uh, right front. It's not where that flag stick is shown there, but they've got to hit the ball in the fairway here. This shot going right down the right-hand side, drawing slightly. This should be good here, John. It is found the rough, Raj. So the problems continue for Mark Brooks. If you're just joining us, let's give you an idea of what has transpired through the front nine, and we'll begin with Retief Goosen's third shot at the opening hole. He has just been continuing to scramble on this Monday playoff day. The par four faced with his bunker shot. Got it up and down and nearly hold it out for a birdie. So Goosen stayed at even par at the opening hole and then for par at the second. Again scrambling nicely. Just pours that right into the middle. Goosen part his first five holes. In the meantime, Mark Brooks, after picking up a couple of opening pars, this is his second shot at the par four third. And that is how Mark Brooks gained an early advantage. He sank that birdie putt, took a one-shot lead over Goosen. And then Goosen's third at the fourth. Fourth hole, third hole. And again, with a beautiful shot, was able to save par there at the third. And then on the tee at the par three sixth, after five straight pars, still trailing by one, but after that beautiful tee shot, rolled it in, and that got him back to one under, and in a tie with Brooks. And at the par four seventh, Brooks for his par. And that would be the first bogey of the day for Brooks. Continuing to scramble in the bunker off the tee at the par three. Eight second shot for Retief there. Three of three and Sand saves today. So Goosen was able to save par, remain at one under. Brooks also got a good, got a good break there. He hit a uh, person in the gallery off the tee there. It bounced back into a favorable position. Was able to get it up and down and save his par. But then at the tee on the ninth, the hook left off this 374 yard par four. And that would lead to another bogey for Brooks, picking up two bogeys in the last three holes on the front nine. So Goosen, who was in great shape on this hole, beautiful approach here. This for birdie for Goosen. And with Brooks's bogey and Goosen's birdie, that was a big swing there and has enabled Goosen to gain a three-shot advantage at the halfway point in this 18-hole playoff. And maybe more remarkable, Johnny, is the way that the South African has responded after what happened on the 72nd hole yesterday. He just couldn't have shot a stroke lower than he did. He In nine holes, he had seven one-putts. I mean... Give me a break, and uh, like you said, all those sand saves, and then that great putt at nine with a big sweeper there. Uh, he's responded well to Brooks when Brooks was one under after three, keeping it in touch. Uh, but Brooks is in not bad shape. I mean, he's not in good on this hole, but I mean, the bottom line is if he can shoot 71, I still think that Goosen, even though he's minus two right now, might be hard pressed to shoot better than 71. So Brooks doesn't have to tear it up. Just got to go back to hitting fairways and greens. Well, with the group is Roger Malpe, who's been with them all day. Raj? Well, this tee shot of Brooks's has found it right rough. Uh, really the biggest thing he was guilty of is not carrying it far enough. I've seen a lot of balls hit on that line that would bound down perfectly into the fairway, but it's a very thick lie now. It's gone to the bottom of this Bermuda rough, John, and all he can do is hit a sand wedge and advance it down the fairway, oh, maybe, you know, 50, 60 yards is what he's gonna try to do. And, Give himself a wedge for a third to the green. That's three straight tee shots on seven. Remember, he couldn't even, he had to lay it up. Nine basically had to lay it up, and now 10 has to lay it up. And that's not Mark Brooks. And that twisted left a little bit, but that's not Mark Brooks's game to be putting it out of play. And uh, not sure why he's doing that, but it's three real bad tee shots, not like they're in the rough. 
Four shot swing, Johnny, in the last four holes in favor of Goosen, who is roughed up a little bit here as well off the tee. Well, this is one of those lies that can do a little bit of everything. Uh, you just hopefully you can track it up there where you're supposed to, but not the kind of lie you can get it close to that whole location, huh, Roger? Well, not really, John, no. Uh, one good thing is the wind is against him here in this shot. Yeah. But playing uphill, the ball above his feet. Uh, and it looks like it wants to jump. It's going to be a hard one to control. That's from 123 yards. He has hit some of these real moon balls out of this line, come out really nice, so he might be able to pull that off. Well, he's hit this extremely high. As you can see, the, even landing in perfectly just on the green, still rolls by. And another good shot, though, Roger. Very good shot from there. Hey, this perfect distance control. Just absolutely Teflon, bulletproof, outside of what occurred on the 72nd. Brooks needs to keep in touch because he wants to let Goosen have to go through the open pressure again of, of uh, that he's handling now, but it's going to the pressure is going to increase as we get closer to 18, and he doesn't want to give him a four or five stroke cushion where he just can't be affected. You know, Mark now has 82 yards, and he cannot see the putting surface. He can see the well, three quarters of the flag stick. There's that large bunker guarding the front of this green. It does have a, you can see the tier that's uh, just past the hole. He can throw it hole high or even a titch right and long and spin it back. But he does have to keep it right with that little draw of his and the draw wind. He's going to have to land it over in this area here and then spin it down. I think that's the only way he could get it close. This ball turning left at the hole. Uh, he did not hit it where he was supposed to. But he got an uphill putt. Well, it has been the discussion uh, at more than one water cooler on this uh, Monday morning. The what transpired at the 72nd hole yesterday. And uh, we now go live there to the 18th here at Southern Hills Country Club for a little bit more of a further demonstration of what happened. Gary Koch and Mark Rolfing, guys. Well, Dan, uh, we are right here at the site of what Mark had to be perhaps the most bizarre finish to a U.S. Open championship that certainly I've ever witnessed. And I know you were right here with Stuart Sink. What happened with Stuart? Well, I think the situation with Stewart was this. He had just buried the 17th hole to get into a tie for the lead. He did not play a good second shot. It ended up long and left here at 18. He wasn't able to get the pitch cl shot close. It ended up about 15 feet above the hole. He hit a beautiful par putt, but it just singed the high side, and it finished about two feet from the hole. Clearly at this point, there was a tremendous emotional letdown for Stewart. And I believe at this point he was thinking two things. The first was, I've just lost the U.S. Open. And the second was, Retief Goosen has just won the U.S. Open, neither of which thought ended up to be correct. What he wasn't thinking about was how to get this two-footer in. He fanned it badly to the right, made a double bogey, and his U.S. Open was over. Well, from Goosen's standpoint, I'm not quite sure what he was thinking. Literally, he had the ball right here. I mean, we're talking one, two, three, you know, maybe four paces from the hole, putting uphill. It couldn't have been simpler. The last thing he wanted to do was just what he did, knock the ball by the hole, leave himself that little downhill slider coming back. Now, I've read where he and his caddy actually thought the putt was going to break to the left, which I think had to be a mental error on both their parts. Of course, he missed that putt. And to me, the toughest one was the third putt that he made to actually get himself into this playoff. I would have thought today there would be a tremendous amount of pressure on Goosen to win this playoff, because if he were to lose this event, I would think that he would have to go down in history as the the author of perhaps one of the greatest chokes in all of golf. Well, that pretty well summed it up. Uh, Goosen said that that putt broke right. He didn't push it, but uh, take my word for it, folks. He really pushed it. So now at the 10th, Mark Brooks with more problems. This for par. About 20 feet uphill. Should move a little left, certainly in the start of the putt. That's a good putt, Roger. 
A little more speed, I think, John. You know, you think back to the 72nd hole, which uh, Gary and Mark were talking about. I mean, if that putt goes in by Stuart Sink that just missed, he's the open champion if that goes in, the par putt. Yes. If the if the putt by Mark Brooks goes in for par, which was on the edge, right. that goes in, he's the open champion. I mean, a lot of different ways, a lot of different scenarios. Well, but. Goosen has sort of owned this championship right out of the blocks from day one. Of course, day one was day two, but because uh, we had the rain overnight, but uh, uh, the bottom line is uh, he. a lot of times when a guy has got a foothold into a, whether it's basketball or whatever, they lose it for a while and they usually come back and win. And it seems to be holding true again in this championship that uh, even though he could have been embarrassed by what happened on the 72nd green, you got to give him a lot of credit for the kind of play he's had today. Give me a break. 11 putts through nine holes and he's probably going to knock this one in, Roger. What's this thing go? Just a little right? It goes a little bit to the right and it's a little bit uphill. Certainly very makeable, John. It's for a five shot lead. Look at this, Roger Malkin. Right in the middle. He has made everything he's looked at today. This has been a most dramatic swing in the last five holes. Brooks led by one stroke just five holes ago. Now he trails by five. That is amazing. And you can log on to NBCSports.com for comprehensive coverage of this U.S. Open playoff. Plus, check out a unique interactive feature that gives you a close-up look at all 18 holes here at Southern Hills. It is all at NBCSports.com. Watch how the non-reaction, even the bunker shot at number one, give me a break. This guy in number one hits it in the front right bunker. It goes down, trickle, 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 and goes in the hole and comes out. Not even a reaction. Well, his, his post-round comments last night were most interesting after all of that occurred at the 72nd. He almost had to believe him just to hear him say it because I can't wait to get out there tomorrow. I think... Uh, you know, I learned something, and uh, we'll go back out. Let's play. Uh, it, it was really remarkable to see yeah. the composure. Well, I was thinking, boy, you know, that's a wonderful lead he's got right now. But, you know, we talked about possibly the biggest gag ever on the 72nd green. Now he's got a perfect Hollywood scenario. Five up, eight holes to go. Last time something like that happened was uh, Arnold Palmer and Billy Casper at Olympic Club in 1966. Uh, that... Uh, Falling apart by Arnold Palmer, Casper winning the next day in a playoff. So we'll see what happens. He's playing great golf. Everything's magical. Everything's going in. But you would think that can't last all day. But maybe it will, Roger. It's an eight iron now, 172 yards. Seemingly downwind. Just at the right side of the green. Doing just what he's supposed to do so far, Roger. Just making it look easy. Trying to follow in the footsteps of uh, other South Africans who have won this championship. Gary Player in 1965, and of course the two championships by countryman Ernie El. So look at the tail of the tape so far. Goosen a little more accurate in greens and regulation, and the putts. Pretty much the same as well. He's got to be real careful, Roger, that he doesn't get the mentality. GM five down. I got to go for every single flag stick because this could be a runaway. He's got three birdies on this hole. But doesn't really match his draw flight that well, but he can fit it in there if he just skins it by that right, right fringe and let it come back. It's an eight iron as well. He starts it at the right side, trying to draw it back some. Just climbs up onto the edge, but can Mark Brooks climb out of the five shot deficit?
through 10 holes. Retief Goosen with a five shot advantage over Mark Brooks. As they play the second hole on the back nine here at Southern Hills Country Club to decide the 101st U.S. Open. Mark Brooks, gritty 40 year old Texan who had his best years back in 96 when he won his only other major championship. 96 PGA fell off the world rankings and the money list in a big way. Really wasn't expected to, to be much of a contender this week at Southern Hills, but he proved everyone wrong, and here he is trying to climb out of that uh, big five-shot deficit, though. Roger, it comes a little bit off that brow halfway. And it, it will move to his left. John, I would think Wilson would be very interested uh, similar line. He'll be interested in what happens around the hole. Moves a little left there and then flattens out a bit at the hole. And then that's not going to be an easy second putt, is it? Now it's a little slice putt. It's really important from about right now, the next 30 minutes, that Goosen does not get another stroke advantage on him because Brooks has got to show him he's coming back, not going the other way. There's not that many holes to go. Certainly, the mistakes that Brooks made at seven and nine and ten, uh, he paid the ultimate penalty for all of them. A couple of pitch outs and one by a tree. Uh, no luck. No luck at all. No. I've seen a lot of shots played to the green out of the rough this week, but those three were very penal. Well, he's putting, Roger. Probably thinking of making another one. Oh, it's the size of a bucket for him. Shorter backstroke there. Good putt. How about another one? Oh, that's a good looking putt. And again, almost stoic. Retief Goosen, 32 years old from Johannesburg, South Africa. Lives in England. You see the four European PGA Tour wins. And uh, played on the President's Cup team as well. But uh, plays the bulk of his golf, uh, unlike Ernie else. Plays it uh, abroad, so not near as well known here in the United States. Wouldn't it be something if uh, he wins for the first time here in the United States? And it's the U.S. Open. Yeah, you got two players in the playoff, and you know if you did your homework, you they'd be at the bottom of the list on who you would pick to win this championship, Roger. I mean, there was really no indication of Brooks ending up number one in greens hitting regulation, where the way he's been playing and. Goosen played all right last week uh, was it fifth uh, but uh, overseas but not having that great a year so mm -hmm. it's a bit of a surprise he's 44th in the world rankings and Brooks who you're looking at there 195th in this championship which of course expected so much out of Tiger Woods it's going to end here with uh, somewhat of an unlikely champion what was that little uh, didn't he say something just a minute ago Roger. Uh, I didn't hear him remark anything, uh, but I think, John, this is a pretty critical putt. If he misses this, I can't see much of a scenario for him to come back. This is not an easy putt. With this little short stroke. There he makes go. it. So he remains five back with seven holes to play. There are a lot of two shot swinger holes. I'll tell you that on this golf course. If if Brooks can get the ball in the fairway and Goosen miss the fairway, you know, you can have a birdie bogey or even birdie double bogey. And well, go ahead, Danny. Someone has removed uh, the T marker there, Johnny. So it's uh, <laughs> it has been <laughs> marked by a sport drink. It's a new 
new kind of commercial here, David <laughs> B. Fay. Someone has a souvenir, David Fay. Well, uh, about three T markers have been pinched today, so uh, pinched. They're, uh, they're going for the souvenirs. But that's uh, Tom makes his drink, and I'm sure he's going to want it back after they play the tee shots. But importantly, the T mark, the T positions are dotted, so he knew exactly where to go. Budget's a little tight, huh? You don't have any extras. <laughs> Those aren't things that you're having your back pocket. Pretty sharp on one end. This one going to the right here. Well, there. See what kind of break he gets. Uh, Brooks has been dead basically when he's gone in the trees. Goosen did get a tough shot on number two. If you guys have been watching, watched it earlier, where he just chipped it out and then got it up and in from a long distance for an amazing par, like he did on. The day before on two, he had left of the creek and made par. So Goosen's been just amazing with his recovery. All championship week long. Now Brooks with a bit of an opening here. He's got to take advantage. Missed the last four fairways. Hit the first four, but the last four have been no good. How's that look, Roger? Should be good. Oh, oh. Skips and off a tree, so it was helped a little bit from going further right. Well, that's going to make it a long second shot. He probably lost about 15 yards of roll. So the creek is a factor now for Brooks. Well, scar tissue in this game runs deep, but we haven't seen any signs, bad signs in this playoff today after Latif Goosen's short miss, which would have won the championship last night. Three putting from a mere 12 feet to let it slip away. Yeah, it's interesting. Hoke, Sanders, Sneed, none of those players came back to win. Even the Arnold Palmer in that 66 Open, they lost in those playoffs. And uh, so he's he's doing something that's uh, pretty special because you'd think he'd have been devastated enough to shoot 77 today. And we'll, we'll remember less, Johnny, that miss at the 72nd hole if Ratif Goosen oh, yeah. is the U.S. Open champion. I mean, that's the whole you know key to this instead of that baggage following him around. As Goosen uh, delicately, lift, delicately lifts the cable wires, Roger. Well, they mark the position of uh, his ball and then move those loose cables around the around his ball, so he can get an unencumbered swing. Executive Director of the USGA, David Fay. Well, as Roger said, uh, it's always a good idea to mark the position of the ball before removing them because you'll know exactly where to replace the ball if the ball does move. If the ball were to move, there would be no penalty. You'd just replace it. Now, if the ball had been lying on top of those cables, you'd have to lift the ball uh, and then drop it. And the reason you'd have to drop it is it was not on the ground. And I believe this graphic will show this. been down on that 18th green with Gary Coke and, and looking really at what Retief Goosen had to do yesterday I still can't believe it and the more I see it and uh, the more I'm amazed. Well you got to really hand it to him playing a round of golf that is really brave I mean, in that that he's making every up and in that's possible he's taking advantage of the greens that he's hit cutting the lights out of it and um, Mark Brooks is might be demoralized by all these up and ins and uh, the birdie putts. I would think with a five shot lead he can't even be thinking about trying to knock this on the green. You got to be just punching it out to the wedge position. That whole location is over on the right hand side and after the rain on Thursday it softened up a little bit over there but by yesterday that entire bank over there Roger Maltby was running on down into the water if the ball missed right. Is he going to go for this Roger. If he does Johnny it's foolhardy he has 210 yards to the hole. He does have a gap in the trees. He has to keep the ball down. But I can't see any scenario where you try to land this ball short of the green and run it on. Him. Well, yeah. Just a punch out. That's really all he could do. Yeah that's a smart shot. He could have tried it. I guarantee you. Uh, there's some guys like Sergio Garcia that would have tried that. Well, he could afford to make that play because of the last six holes he actually trailed Mark Brooks by a shot after the first five holes of this playoff and has picked up six shots. 
what about this one? Another terrible lie. Three of the worst lies I've seen all week. He can't do anything but advance this ball like he did on number 10, Johnny. I can barely see the top of the ball looking straight down on top of it. championship cauldron before remember Valhalla 96 he won that championship and uh, there was some pretty high drama even before they went to the playoff this was Brooks's birdie a five footer he got it up and down from the bunker Kenny Perry had bogeyed that hole in regulation to give him a chance to get into the playoff and then they went back to the 18th tee and this was the second shot for Brooks you see the yardage 229 yards his second shot Bounds up to the green, and then Kenny Perry had a rough time, and again was well publicized. He spent the time while Brooks was finishing in regulation in the broadcast booth, received some criticism that he should have been out warming up. Then he went rough to rough after his uh, first and second shots there. Wasn't able to get it up onto the green until his fifth shot. In the meantime, Brooks played his birdie putt to there, or his eagle putt to there, and then stroked the birdie in to win it. And so that was the major championship for Mark Brooks five years ago, and it allowed him to get into this championship. This is the final year of the exemption after winning that championship. So now back to the play here, and Goosen. 89 yards left to the hole. This is sand iron. Just got to keep this ball left to the hole, Johnny, as much as this thing tilts left to right. I agree, about 12 feet left, or trickle right. 18. Needs to get down. Okay. Brooks Good. ball really chased down there, huh, Roger? Yeah. He just uh, kind of squeezed it out of there, John, and the ball must have run 140 yards or so. How are Mark Burks's emotions running out there right now, Roger? Well, I just think uh, I overheard him talking to his caddy and saying, boy, has he really paid the price for some miscues, and he has, and that's uh, what can happen on a USGA set up golf course for an Open Championship. Uh, we've seen a lot of players with rough that is somewhat spotty and uh, get shots to, at the green when they've uh, missed fairways. We saw Retief uh, Goosen yesterday uh, have many opportunities to knock the ball on the green uh, after missing fairways, but uh, certainly for this little stretch, Mark Brooks has paid for each and every mistake, and and that's really, uh, I think, from, for golfers that have played in a lot of opens, they come to expect that. It used to be that was the way it was any time you missed a fairway. Roger, Mark Brooks drove the ball in the first four fairways of the day and has not hit one since. Not good when you're hitting it short and crooked, Roger. Because he hits the ball sh very short by uh, standards today. It's one of the shortest hitters in the field. This is just that no. Really. And he needs to play a good pitch here. This from about 45 yards. So Mark Brooks trailing and struggling at the U.S. Open. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the 101st United States Open, Southern Hills in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where Mark Brooks has this chip for his par. He will bogey the par 412. That will be his fourth bogey in his last six holes. 
This was his third shot, Johnny. Well, just basically didn't, it was a little bit on the down slope instead of swinging with the slope and trying to hit it low. Last thought might have been trying to hit it a little higher than the slope was allowing you. When you do that, you can chunk it all day long. Now Retief Goosen for his par. Breaker to the left, that's from about 18 feet. Both Brooks and Goosen will bogey the famous 12th at Southern Hills, a hole that Ben Hogan once called the best far four 12th hole in America. And that was Goosen's first bogey of the day. That two to the right of Mark Brooks' name will change to a three as they head up the hill to 13. But keep in mind, this 13th hole presents an eagle opportunity, and after that, you have four of the toughest five holes at Southern Hills to finish the round. So this is not over yet. In fact, we saw Phil Mickelson yesterday in the third round, three putt after reaching this green. He was only six or seven feet away for Eagle and walked off with a par. Hole location in the front left corner today, which means that most of the putts will be coming from behind the hole and straight down the hill. Roger, they seem to be talking about a two iron. Well, there's considerable discussion here with the wind blowing at the player's back. So you kind of run out of fairway on the right hand side with the driver. So I'm sure they may be thinking of an iron or a fairway wood to see if they just chase it down to the bottom of the hill. You see the breeze ruffling the treetops here at Southern Hills. It's actually quite a bit windier here than it was both days on the weekend. Yeah, that's what I'm used Golf course never really got its fire back, though, after those rains on Thursday night, Mark. Can you imagine what it would have been like by now, Roger, if it hadn't rained? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> now a two iron going down the right hand side. That's going to get on through the fairway. Right rough. Well, that is some of the deepest rough on the golf course here. Let's take a look at the lowest course averages for U.S. Open. Southern Hills, 73.27 right there. Baltus Rall, of course, back in 93, there wasn't a whole lot of rough that year. But scoring has really been incredible this week, Johnny. I didn't think they would shoot this low. Important drive right here. This ball right down the right center of the fairway. Should be good. It is. So Mark Brooks with a drive in the fairway at 13 and a chance to make eagle. Retief Goosen has put the ball in the right hand rough. Can Brooks apply some pressure? We'll find out when we come back to Southern Hills. Welcome back to our continuing coverage of this 101st U.S. Open Championship, 32nd playoff in Open history on this Monday in Tulsa. Ratif Goosen with a big five-shot advantage as they play the 13th. Mark? 
This is second shot at the par five, has driven the ball into the right hand rough. And in a very deep lie, Mark, and he has a tree ahead of him that he'll have to keep the ball underneath the branches of, oh, say about 30 yards. And he's just going to try to squeeze it out of here if he can and hit a shot very much like Mark Brooks hit last hole, see if he can get it to chase down the fairway. Kind of squirted down the right hand side, but I believe it'll be okay. Should end up just in the intermediate cut of rough there. A good angle over to the whole location on the left today, but it is a big difference when the ball is not in the fairway, even though that is short rough. You can see Retief Goosen has played the par fives better than Mark Brooks this week. He is two under par. Brooks actually one over par. Of course, most of his problems came back at the long fifth. You know, Mark Brooks now 230 yards to the hole, 223 to the front edge, so very, very reachable. He is at the base of a swale in the middle of this fairway, and so he's going to have to get it up rather quickly. It's a very steep slope immediately in front of him, and that not necessarily a strong suit, uh, not a real high ball hitter by uh, any stretch of the imagination, so this will be a little bit of an awkward shot. Dead downwind pretty much, right? Yes, John, uh, downwind, feeling like it's a little bit left to right, but it is helping. Roger, looking at these two players before they teed off today, I took a look at who I thought needed to win this U.S. Open more, who it would benefit more, and in my mind, it would mean more to Mark Brooks, and, and I think sometimes that just adds a little more pressure. Well, uh, I might agree with that assessment, but... Uh, I can't imagine needing it more than Retief Goosen after what transpired on the 18th ground yesterday. Well, that is true, but Goosen, of course, at the age of 32, has much more of his career ahead of them than, than Mark Brooks does. Important shot here, though. Pretty tough to land this on the green and downwind and stop it, isn't it? Yes, it should be very difficult. Well, he has hit it very, very high. And this ball going at the right bunker. That will actually, Roger, probably be better than if it were in the rough over there. He does have quite a bit of green to work with, but it will be a big breaker to the left coming down the hill. Well, Saturday, June 30th, join us for the world's most prestigious tennis championship. What a year it has been for Jennifer Capriati. Can she make it three in a row, three consecutive Grand Slam titles? She begins the quest at Wimbledon. Our coverage begins Saturday, June 30th on NBC. Retief Goosen played this 13th hole as a three shot hole on Friday. Was able to make a four, I would think though. He's got to be thinking center of the green, back of the green from there, Roger. Well, certainly. I, I don't know any reason to go right at this hole, even with the 95-yard shot that he has. This was Goosen's third shot on Friday. Of course, it was from the fairway. Good one it was. The location over pretty close to where it is today. Tough to attack it from there today, though. Not the greatest looking lie, is it? No, it's sitting down a little bit, John. I believe he's got to be looking at the gap uh, in between the bunkers and trying to land it on the front of the green on that line. Uh, but then again, I thought he was going to lag from 10 feet on the last hole yesterday, too. <laughs> I just think it's the odds on play to keep this ball right of the hole. Taking this at the hole. Beautiful shot by Retief Goosen. He currently holds a five shot advantage over Mark Brooks in this stroke play playoff. Foreign born champions in the United States Open as Retief Goosen looks to add his name to the list. The first 31 championships, a very large percentage. As you see there, better than 67%. The last 69 championships, just five. Johnny, any reason for that? 
Well, American golf just absolutely blossomed uh, and just took off. And uh, I think that uh, had more golf courses to play on. I really believe that had a lot to do with it. Um, we embraced professional golf maybe even more. And uh, I, there was a lot of momentum there. And, the, you know, the I think the competition breeds better players. It's like junior golf when you got good players to grow up against. The junior programs were way advanced from anything over around the world. Uh, every state had their own organizations. and. Uh, um, maybe the USGA obviously had a lot to do with that too, uh, guiding this whole thing. So, got to give a plug to the USGA, really. Kusin trying to become only the sixth foreign born champion of the Open in the last 70 championships. Of course, there were the two titles by Els, David Graham in 81, Tony Jacklin in 1970, and of course, Gary Player, also from South Africa in 65. Mark Brooks now with a third shot from a greenside bunker at the par 5 13th. Well, and a shot, Mark, that's been complicated by the fact it's gone through the bottom of the bunker and a bit onto a downslope now, uh, which will make him drive it out lower than he would like. And of course, the shot downhill. Now, he does have a lot of green to work with, but uh, it would have been a much easier shot had the ball come up two or three feet short of where it lies right now. Third shot back at the 12th from a downhill lie, and hit this one just fat enough. And slowly, the championship is slipping away from Mark Brooks. Well, let's take a look where this club enters the sand. That's the key thing here. Roger pointed out nicely. Watch when it comes down. Watch where this hits. Just hits well behind the ball, probably six inches behind it. And, um, just wasn't close enough to the ball to get some distance out of the shot. Roger, you have been so right. Every wayward shot that Mark Brooks has hit today has ended up in just as bad a place as it could. Has not gotten a break at all. But that sand shot, Roger, was not impossible. I mean, no, 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 no. It was not as hard as you know you would think it would be by him leaving it in the bunker. But because it was on the downhill slope, he could only carry the ball just into the fringe or just onto the green mm -hmm. and then let it roll out. So he needed to carry that ball another good oh, six feet, seven feet in the air, John. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny how this game treats you some days, huh, Roger? Well, yeah, I mean, some days are like this and uh, anybody that's played golf knows it. Uh, Mark hasn't played all that poorly, but he is paying the price for his mistakes today. He's just not catching a break. I think it's got to be a little surprising to him too, Roger, that he is just three over par and trailing by five shots. I bet he wouldn't have believed that if you told him that were the case, that he'd be three over here at 13. He is playing in his 15th U.S. Open. Trying to make this illustrious list. He did tie for fifth back in 1990, but of those 14 U.S. Opens, has missed a cut in over half. He's missed a cut in eight of them. So it looked like Retief Goosen might drop a shot to Mark Brooks here, but he could well pick up one now. I mean, you look at all these playoffs we mentioned since 84. Only Fuzzy Zeller really shot a good round. Everybody else has shot reasonably high. Uh, Fuzzy. At Wingfoot, um, shot 67 against Norman's 75. But the average score in those playoffs, like you were saying, uh, Mark, is more in the almost mid 70s. So he's getting run over a little today by Retief's great 200 par. That was the lowest round, Johnny, in U.S. Open playoff history, by the way. That 67 that Fuzzy delivered at Wingfoot, 84. So Goosen plays par 5, 13th as a three shot hole. He'll walk off after tapping this in with a par. With a five shot advantage. Par on any hole. The rest of the way to the clubhouse is a good score for Latif Goosen. Now Mark Brooks. We've said time and time again 
These putts are important and this one obviously is it's a tough stretch starting at 14 but he just can't afford to get any further behind. Perhaps just a little break to the left here, Roger. He's looking for. Yes, just a little bit to the left, and uh, you know, obviously, at this stage, cannot afford to miss really anything. <laughs> Something wild has got to happen going his way. He doesn't have any chance here, but he's put uh, the first step. Got to make. It. did yesterday at the 72nd hole I'm sure Mark Brooks now knows that anything can happen and over at the 14th Johnny the long par three today 231 yards all right Dan this is quite a hole like you said 231 yards the prevailing wind is going right to left a location you can see is in the back right uh, you almost have to land just over this bunker here to get it close because it really really runs you can see that Flagstick's saying that it's dead downwind, but the wind should be going, I believe, this way here. That's the prevailing wind off of 18. So not easy to get the ball close to the hole. And the, the wind is blowing. It reminds me a lot of that shot of Tommy Bolt putting off uh, the 72nd green, leaving the flagstick in the hole, which was legal then. And the wind was just whooping that flag and you're getting a little more of that. Wind's a little warmer back in 1958 when they dubbed it the Blast Furnace Open. I'll tell you, the weather never got really uncomfortable here in Tulsa all week. It's just been uh, outside of the rain that occurred early on. It's been a great weather week for the championship. This 14-18, um, Mark talked about it, Gary talked about it, I've talked about it. It's really the, it's sort of crunch factor in time. It's the hardest holes on the golf course. Uh, several of them lie right in this area, four out of the five. And, uh, Goosen has played on plus four, so if Brooks happened to get it going here, you would think there was going to be some bogeys by Goosen in the next bit, and uh, there could be a little bit closing of that five stroke margin. At this point in this championship, we've maybe come to expect the unexpected, certainly a little bit further on down the line here at 18. We'll see what happens today. Goosen looks to become the U.S. Open champion at age 32. Roger, you handy? I am, John. Retief has a, a three iron. I think the wind uh, may be helping slightly, but certainly from the right. Excuse me, this is a four iron. Good shot, good play. Well, it came down softly, didn't it? Boy, it hit it very, very high. That was a terrific, terrific shot. I think these greens were watered a little more heavily last night, John. Well, Roger, we're looking at how the leaders have played this uh, treacherous set of holes, 14 through 18, oh, and uh, Goosen has struggled a bit more through them. Boy, that puts some pressure, does it not? Yeah, that's just, boy, you're thinking you're going to get an opening on this hole, and you just it out there perfectly. Come on, Brooks, you come on, Brooks. Ball right there. turning right to left at the left center of the green. Hi, Brooks. Come on, Brooks. Yeah, that's a good shot, a high. Chance of come on, Brooksy, come on, Brooksy, and chance of go, Goose. Goose is flying pretty high right now with a five-shot lead. 18 hole playoff.
Welcome back to this 18-hole playoff. Keith Goosen at two under, three birdies and a bogey on his car today. Five-shot lead over Mark Brooks, both on the green and regulation of the long par 314th. Saturday, July 7th, the fastest growing sport in America comes to NBC. NASCAR, Pepsi 400. Saturday, July 7th. Well, Goosen has had his foot on the accelerator today. It's just been uh, such a remarkable performance. As you take a look at this stretch that we've talked about, ending with 18. That's really stout there. And Goosen is first to play here at 14, Raj. He is this from uh, just about 40 feet. A bit of a double break. I mean, a little bit left in the first part. Of the I think in the area of the hole, it should swing back to the right. Well, Goosen three putted this very hole yesterday. stuff. He's been very good on his approach putts. That one is short. That is a missable putt. That's a good five feet, John. Yeah, it is. Brooks could do something real nice like drain this. Who knows? He's got a putt that certainly wants to move right in the first 12 feet or so. It's only a straighten up in the area of the hole, son. Only a second birdie putt in the last eight holes, so probably feels good to be putting for a birdie, Roger. Yeah. A lot of people in the, the Oklahoma area have been coming up to Mark Brooks, yeah. and there's a reason for that. His uh, late father, W. Hal Brooks, was a good athlete. He played uh, college basketball at Oklahoma State for the late legendary coach Hank Iba. And a lot of people still remember uh, the late Mr. Brooks, who was a Baptist minister. And uh, Mark says he's had more than just a few people come up and say, we really, we really liked your dad. I asked uh, Mark about his dad. He said, what is your uh, most fond memory of him? He said, you know, he was just a, a, just a good guy, a good man. He said he was a Baptist minister. He was just a good human being. Well, right now, Mark Brooks has got to say, I believe Time, Johnny. I mean, pars at this point, as long as Goosen's able to keep it right in the right track, aren't going to do it for Brooks, who trails by five as par is in. But Goosen not yet in with his par to keep that five shot advantage. He made a, like a spike mark or something hit that ball. Did you see that, Roger? Well, I saw him tap it down after it happened, John. Uh, I really couldn't tell if the putt was really affected by it. I'm sure it must have been if he went after it like that. Yeah, it was more than a tap. It was like, how dare you? And he's had that kind of round. He needs to get it back, the karma going right. And uh, maybe the only way he can get the karma going right is by Goosen giving him one, which could happen right here. There's Greg Heerman, who has been in Retief's ear more than a few times this week. And how many times have we seen the saves for par? Is this Roger this left center or something? Yes. You never want to give one back, John. That caught a big part of the edge on the left side, but steered in. Houston remains two under, five clear. That was quite lucky. I'll tell you, when you got sharp edge cups, freshly cut, they don't usually go into the edge like this. Watch this putt. This probably goes in by a hundredth of an inch. I mean, literally could have spun out. So 
Oh, he had a good putt. The thing is, if they're on the top side, they like to go in. Four holes left, Gary. Well, the 15th is a 412-yard par four. through the championship. This was the most difficult green on the course to putt. So uh, an interesting little hole. A lot of options for the players off the tee. And it appears that Goosen, continuing his conservative game plan, will go with yet another iron. Into the wind, huh, Gary? Into so, and from the right, I would think, John. It is. He has that little sort of draw, knockdown draw, which works real well. But that one, uh, not too bad, huh, Gary? Now just triples into the intermediate cut of rough. Yeah. Uh, I think in this situation, trailing by five, Mark Brooks, yes, must be much more aggressive really does set up well for his right to left ball flight. Well, if you look at his demise up to this point, Gary, it was all the tee shots, no doubt about it. side turned it back into the center of the fairway he'll have a much shorter second shot than will Retief Goosen and so far it has been the Retief Goosen show he has performed extremely well in this 18 hole playoff now holds a five shot lead welcome back to Tulsa Southern Hills Country Club 18 hole playoff for the 101st United States Open Championship. Through 14 holes, Retief Goosen two under par. Mark Brooks struggling at three over. Goosen uh, finds his ball in the intermediate cut of rough on the right hand side, Roger. He does, 154 yards from the hole, and he and his caddy inspecting the lie there a moment ago very carefully. Ball sitting down some, and of course the concern is about the ball flying out of that lie. May be difficult to control. Good angle to play at the hole, though, which is there in the front left. So that's in his favor. Well, yesterday, Roger, if you remember, he was in the intermediate cut of rough on the left hand side of the hole and uh, a wonderful second shot. Ended up making birdie. But this hole location a lot more difficult to get it close if you can't spin it. I'm assuming another one we can look for in the center of the green, right of the hole. Well, I would certainly think that would be the order of the day, although if a miss left here, then you're playing back uphill uh, at the hole. And if a miss right here, you're coming back down the slope. So he can be aggressive with this shot as far as the line he chooses. The front left bunker, that's no good. Ball right of the hole at the center of the green, drawing at the hole. Should catch a slope and try to filter back down a little bit. Not bad at all. Not many mistakes on here. Oh, very few, and the ones he has made, John, he's been able to recover from. Unlike Mark Brooks. Here's a chance for Brooks to hit one close, I think. This sets up very well for his shot shape. 130 yards to the hole. He can hit this out at the center of the green. Spin it right to left and take it into this hole location. I think he can get it close from here if he hits a good shot. 
Just got to get a stroke back at some point. center of the green drawing a little bit should spin left it should spin hard left and does find it Mark Brooks will be left with an uphill putt for a birdie a very realistic chance finally something going his way who at age 32 might make this championship his first win in the United States and of course we all know what uh, Ernie else went on to do in the world of golf Major championship like this, Johnny, even though Retief hasn't done tremendous things in his sport, has a great way of just giving you confidence. I mean, you're the open champion. You get introduced that way every time you get on the tee. Yeah, it makes you try even harder, and it makes um, just, uh, you made it, you explained it well. It just, it makes you lengthen your stride just a little bit instead of just like nobody's noticing me. It doesn't really matter if I make the cut. All of a sudden, you have a responsibility. Worked out pretty well for these guys, Johnny. First PGA yeah. Tour went at the U.S. Open. Uh, Els, Pate, Moody, Trevino, Nicholas, really the only man uh, out of that league really is Jack Fleck back at 55, but uh, the rest of those golfers, uh, very, very impressive. Yes, some unusual winners like uh, an Orville Moody, but he proved how good a ball striker he was, and then on the senior tour, he just dominated for a while. And yeah, that was Moody's uh, only win, but uh, quite a list. Gary? Retief Goosen surveying this putt, and uh, Roger, a good position to be putting from, certainly not fast or breakaway speed by any means. No, uh, there should be some slip uh, from left to right, certainly in the beginning of the putt, maybe flat uh, in the area of the hole. But uh, I think unlikely that he might hold from here, although possible. I think two putts is probably more than the norm from here. And his putting today, it has been impressive. First for a par at the second, after a very wayward tee shot. Now for yet another par, sand save at three. This is at the sixth, right in the center. And at the ninth, big curling downhill breaker, the speed and line both perfect. Yet another birdie at the 10th. So for a man who missed a little 18 incher and a chance to win this championship outright yesterday, uh, he has putted the ball incredibly well. Gary, it's not hard to do the math. Four holes to go. I'll count this one. Uh, bottom line is he needs to be picking up a stroke pretty much every hole and uh, have a double dipper somewhere to get a force of playoff. I mean, an extra hole. Certainly looking at the best opportunity that he's had in, in many holes. And he's drawn a very awkward looking little putt. Uh, everything looks as though it wants to slope right to left on this green, uh, certainly from the angle he's putting, but there is a slope coming out of the front left bunker uh, that may have something to do with how this putt uh, will break. So he's just looked back and forth, back and forth, and I don't think he's very comfortable with it. I don't think it's going to do much myself. Right. I think it's pretty straight, Roger. I was out on the green earlier this morning rolling some balls around. The, the uncomfortable feeling comes from where he's standing. As you mentioned, his feet actually are above the ball. So that certainly gives you the impression the ball might want to move a little right. In the hole. Oh. Broke left, Gary. It did. It actually moved a little to the left. That is just, to me, almost like bad luck. He started dead center, Gary. He did. Uh, it looked to me, John, like he hit a very good putt. Wow. That was a heartbreaker there, Gary. Here, Thanks, Mark Lee. Brooks, our family. Did everything he was supposed to do except pick it out of the hole. So 
Boosom safely in with his par 15. Remains five shots ahead. C's had just 21 putts today through 15 holes. As they head to the par four, 16th Johnny, you look at this longest par four. And the whole location today is sort of a nice little comfortable whole location in the middle of the green. And mention the longest uh, par four in open history, Pinehurst number two, 16th hole there, 489 yards. And mentioned earlier in the championship, Johnny, I guess we're just around the corner from the uh, first par four 500 yard hole. I mean, I guess that, yeah. that's where the game and technology is taking us. This hole could have very well been 510, being that it's downwind, uh, and it would have played, you know, finally a long iron. But these guys don't have to hit long irons if they hit a good drive. But Mark Brooks will probably because he's one of the shorter hitters on uh, in the in the uh, ranks 178th on on tour and uh, just averaging 258 yards. So Mark is a big hole for Mark Brooks, Roger. Well, it is certainly now that. Retief has driven the ball beautifully in the fairway. Yeah. Four pars though by Mark Brooks. Brooks was driving it excellently all championship ranking fourth and fairways hit. Is that high, Rob? This ball starts down the left hand side. The wind is holding it. This should be good. He's got a funny little bounce left, but um, should be in the first cut. Seems hopeless for Mark Brooks, but when you're 40 years old, you still have a chance to win this championship. You will grind to the very end. Back in a moment. Well, we've been reminding you of our Wimbledon Tennis Championship coming up Saturday, June 30th. Pete Sampras, one of the all time greats, if not the best ever. There at the All England Club. See if he can nail down yet another Wimbledon title. Mark Brooks, it looks bleak for this man from Texas. Yep. Five back through 15 as they're on the long par 4 16th. Roger. Well, Paul just creeped into the intermediate rough, uh, just inches off the fairway and has settled down a little bit. I just don't think this is the kind of lie that he can get really any spin on. He has 196 yards left to the hole. I just think he's going to have to land this ball obviously right at that bunker in front of the green right of the hole and just try to kind of chase it up into the green. You know what club it is, Rog? I think he's got a six iron out, John. Land it just short of the green or just on the front edge with a draw? Yeah, but it's going to be hard to draw from this lie. I mean, this is a just a no spin kind of lie. He got it pretty good. Ready. This left of the hole. Well, I tell you what, that is just wonderful. He won't give up. Can't hit any better now. <laughs> that was just perfect. He did hold it against the wind beautifully. I guess the grass has just dried out enough that he could get some spin on it. Just barely cleared the bunker, but that's what he had to do. He's got to go for it right now. He needs a, he really just needs a magical finish. He needs a finish birdie, birdie, birdie. And that might not be enough, but he's got the birdie in. And again, looming in the distance, the hole that haunted Goosen last night, 18. Goosen has missed the screen three out of four times, Roger. That's the one news, but he got it up and down every time. Do you think, Johnny, after what we watched last night, anybody's going to leave 18? They have been waiting here for a long, long time. Yeah, it's amazing how uh, desirable these stands are. They just, just sitting here, just looking at nothing. 
We want to make sure they get a good seat alongside 18. These are the people. That this is the 18 hole, here. folks. He, they saw the ninth green. Now that's been a couple hours ago almost. They saw that hole and got all excited, and then they've just been sitting here drinking and eating and doing yep. things. Not Saying to themselves, pretty wacky things happened last night. Wonder what can be in store at 18 today. Goosen right now with a big lead over at 16. What's the slowdown here for Roger? Well, John, I think he's trying to get the wind to commit for the longest time. It's just <laughs> coming straight from the left, and I think he wants it at his back a little bit, which is where it should be. I didn't know you had much choice in the matter. Well, he just kind of waited out the wind, I think. 176 yards, it's an eight iron. Well, that guy. He's pulled this ball toward the left-hand side. It's going to miss left. Came right over the top of that rod. Just right over it. So who knows? Brooks with a birdie putt. Maybe bogey land for Goosen. Could represent a two shot swing. If that were to happen there, you might be surprised what could happen if that were to uh, take place. Watch this coming here. Good shape now. And then, ooh, right over the top of it and release the club. It's okay to come over as long as you keep the face open. But when you come over it and shut it down, then that's a pull hook. So, if Retief Goosen is able to hang on to this championship, he will be defending at the Black Course at Beth Page State Park on Long Island, the site of the 102nd U.S. Open in 2002. It'll be the first held on a truly public course. I think the public is uh, going to be amazed at how uh, what a fantastic venue this is going to turn out to be, Johnny. It's undergone extensive renovations by Reese Jones. It'll be the 15th Open contested in New York. And if you're interested in getting some tickets, there are the dates. There's the website. There's the 1-800 number. And there's a look at the future U.S. Open sites. Beth Page in 2002, just outside of Chicago in three. And then they stay in the New York area, back to blessed golf terrain, as it was once described by Ben Crenshaw. Shinnecock in Southampton, New York, and then back to number two in 2005. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to Beth Page. I have no clue what that it's like, but um, the renovation is supposedly have really done a great job, and it's nice to go to a public course and something. I, I bet tea times are going to be tough to get after the open, though. <laughs> what do you think, David? It's going to be a great site. Uh, it's a terrific tilling has uh, test and uh, uh, the public uh, right. You can play it now for less than 40 bucks. Have you sell it? a lot of tickets. I played a lot of rounds on it's a, it was a Black. it's a very it was a very good golf course before the renovation. I mean it, it's it's it was you know sparkle now you know they have a sign on the first tee that said first of all you have to walk the golf course and it basically says if you don't have a very good game consider playing one of the other courses yeah, there. It's sort of the right. golf's equivalent of uh, a roller coaster ride if you're pregnant or you have a heart condition reconsider or, or like play. a black diamond course at a ski resort. That's exactly <laughs> right. Go the back bowls and fail. <laughs> All right. Well the drama here at uh, 16. Let's take a look at the lie uh, for Retief Goosen. Roger. Well he's got a very good lie over here. Uh, not much problem at all. He's pitching uphill, break to his right. To, you know, this is in the U.S. Open. This is about as simple a pitch shot as you're going to get, John. Just not a hard shot at all. There's just got to be a swing in strokes here, and uh, it almost needs to be a two-stroke swing for uh, Mark Brooks, five strokes behind. Goosen shooting two under par, which. Pars in will be a 68, which not many people have ever shot. Really, just Fuzzy Zeller shot the 67 we talked about earlier at Wingfoot against Norman. But uh, he's playing a great championship uh, playoff round. And you got to hand it to him, but he's still got three holes to go. That's just a pitching which is chipping with. Surprised at that. He gave that a little extra. He gave a little hand at the bottom. A lot like the putty hit at the 72nd hole right at the bottom. Gave it a little bit of old fashioned hand action. Yeah, let's take a look at this. Slow motion probably won't show it, but uh, see, he got a little wrist going back and then 
Oh, yes, there's a lot of risk going through. They broke that uh, angle between his left forearm and the club shaft angle. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that if that's the way you plan it. But if you don't plan it, you got about a six foot, six feet past the ball, uh, the hole with that kind of action. Roger, you think this is reasonably important? I, <laughs> I think this has everything to do with uh, any chance for Mark Brooks. Uh, this putt now downhill and a slider to the right. Not an easy putt by any means. The one he's just simply got to have. Yeah, if he happened to miss this and Bruce and make his, uh, Don Meredith could come out of retirement and sing his song. Adversity in his career. Even before the riches of the PGA Tour awarded him with his great play in '96, this was a man that lost and regained his card three times in the '80s before finally becoming successful. Pace, John, just a little too firm. Steps right up. Knocks the four in. Close, but just as Roger said, Johnny, a little bit too much on it. It's a very fine putt. I mean, there's no doubt it was fine. It's just, just one of those days you turn on your radio and you get. Fuzz instead of clear channel sound. <laughs> no birdies since the third hole, the lone birdie for Mark Brooks. Now Goosen, leader by five, for par to stay ahead by five. This putt should move a little to his left. with two holes to play. Five shot advantage. Well that putter should be bronzed after today. Uh, he just maybe uh, with gold the golden goose. <laughs> 17 Johnny par four. Yes 365 yards uh, members and people just love this hole that play it all the time. It's through the gap of the trees only about 30 feet wide there. Probably a two iron off the tee. Brooks will probably go three wood. Hit right there. If you hit it down the right side, it will kick right, and you could go into problems there. But the very small green, sort of angled green. The whole location today is in a spot I thought it was going to be during the four rounds of the championship. It's uh, on the right side, eight from the right. You can see uh, over the green there is really a tough up and in uh, with that whole location. So you want to keep the ball underneath the hole, and a lot of balls will end up in this collection area in here. It's hard to get it up on this plateau that's in this area there. You've got to hit a great iron shot there and challenge the back edge if you do that with the backspin, especially into the wind. Well, we talked about the other contenders in this championship and Mark Brooks and Stuart Sink with their families, their kids here. It's Father's Day yesterday and uh, oh, it's been somewhat of a lonesome trip through this championship for Retief Goosen. It's wife Tracy, they got married a couple of uh, months ago. She's not here. His dad who uh, introduced him to the game very good player about a three handicap and his mother and dad Theo not here he has two older brothers they're not here he said he used to play a lot of golf with his brothers growing up we also touched on it yesterday that uh, like Ernie else you know there just wasn't a lot of television available to watch the PGA Tour here in the United States or even abroad and Latif Goosen spent a lot of time looking at Jack Nicholas instructional books golf my way golf my way like Ernie else did yeah and uh, Greg Norman coming through the shoot now here Johnny and yeah 17 let's take a look at that we uh, touched on it, 45 yards out you have just eight yards wide which is 24 feet between 
these limbs that are right here. So if you're uh, playing the back tees here and had a nice little slice to your game, you'd be squirming a little bit. Has hit a low bullet down the left hand side. This should be good. Look at the card by Retief Goosen. The solid start with five straight pars. The birdie at the sixth, birdie at the ninth, and the, a lot of those pars were excellent par saving pars. He got up and down six times today for par. Retief has the lone hiccup at the twelfth. I don't know about you guys, but I sort of forgot what happened in the 72nd green. What did happen? I think Retief has forgotten as well when a lot of us didn't believe he could or would. Wow, it's just been clutch. There's that three wood I was talking about. More aggressive play. Back into the wind. Chases it with that right side. Has a beautiful chase move. Oh, going down the center of the fairway. He's going to bounce right, son. Huh? Yeah. Retief Goosen on his way to the championship. Well, he has the five shot lead with two holes left in the 101st edition. Back at Southern Hills Country Club. Tee shot struck at the par 4 17th by Goosen and Brooks. Well, it's miracle time right now if Brooks is going to any hopes of chasing down this tall South African foreign born champion since World War II, Arnie Els twice and some of the names we mentioned earlier. David Graham, Tony Jacklin and back in 65 another South African Gary Player. Well it's getting even more desperate Roger might need a hole out by Brooks. And that's just about right now if you're Retief Goosen John you got to start thinking about where you don't want the ball to go. You can't have the ball go over this green. That's where something bad could happen to him. He's got to keep the ball short of the hole to make sure that you know there's no real bad scenario. 112 yards to the hole. It's always the biggest challenge in golf, isn't it? Roger with a big lead, you want to kind of keep momentum, keep the foot on the gas pedal a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, but you you know, that's what got him in this playoff today to start with. You know, you gotta start thinking about how do I make par and no worse than par, certainly no worse than a five. Sometimes tough to gear down though. I mean he's, you know, he's gonna be pumped up, he's close to the title, it's sometimes tough to gear down, but you're right. I mean you gotta let the mental powers take over the swing as best as possible. Missed six screens, Roger, through 16, and he's he's got it up and up and down six times. Missed seven greens, so I mean that's pretty impressive. Real impressive. Pretty straightforward here. Huh? They got the nice opening, looking right at him. He's got it in the best place to have it, reasonable level one. I would imagine he'd hit in that little collection area that I was uh, circling to tell straighter. 25 feet short, might hit it into the bank and come back in there. I'm surprised if he throws it all the way to the back, but five shot lead. Maybe going for style points. This ball a little left of the hole needs to get down. Sit, sitting up like he's got a T under it, Roger. That's a, that was really weird, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I'm just uh, I'm surprised that he would try to be so aggressive. Well, I think the iron shot in the last hole and the iron shot here were first cousins to the 72nd hole putt. But first cousins. <laughs> Some relation, huh? Yeah, there's a relationship there. I'll promise you that has given Mark Brooks some hope. Now, 108 yards, he has to go hole hunting. Gives him 
yourself a fighting chance. And with Goosen over the green at 17, we've talked about how stoic, how in control, how expressionless he has been. After that shot flew over, he's like, man, what do I got coming up next? Does have a five shot lead. So after the prize goes back in and, the, and we see Brooks, it's just Goosen doing his thing. Proving that he did have the right stuff or whatever. Okay. All right. So same exact to the trophy or to Mark Brooks in the locker room. Okay. All right. Thank you, Billy. Just, this is just uh, this, this, the goose. The goose doing his thing. Okay. All right. Uh, we should wait really, well, not really late. <laughs> Went up 18 to run that. The wait continues at the 18th. Teeth Goosen and Mark Brooks just a hole behind at the 17th. Appears to be that uh, they will be welcoming the champion from South Africa, but. Still a little bit, bit of golf to be played. As we go back out to 17 in this uh, third shot by Goosen from the thick rough. Well, he had to make sure he got it up on top and get it where he can maybe make no worse than five. Uh, well, the U.S. Senior Open Championship comes your way Saturday, June 30th. And there you see Tom Watson, who won the Senior PGA Championship at Ridgewood earlier this year. Very impressive display of golf put on by Watson. So Watson playing well, Hale Irwin playing well, Tom Kite playing well. By the way, Kite's best finish turned in the best finish by a player over 50 years old at an Open in 41 years. Tied for fifth, Tom Kite did. That was sensational. Can't say enough about that performance. Yeah, the shots he hit and the putts he made, he's got to be really happy. Doesn't, well, doesn't take much to make Tom Kite happy about golf, but he's real happy right now. <laughs> Can't say enough about the performance of this man, Retief Goosen. It's not in his back pocket yet. It appears that way. Has one par putt left at the 17th. That's yeah, about 20 footer uphill. Should move on from his right to left. Certainly, there is the potential for a two shot swing here. Swing and Johnny at this point you would have to believe that if Brooks has any chance he's just got to bury this birdie putt to make it a three shot lead for Goosen going to 18 where we've seen that uh, there could be a lot of shots exchanged in a hurry. You don't think John Vanderbilt's caddy will be caddying for me on 18. <laughs> I don't think that would be a good idea. Vanderbilt also had a three shot lead in the final <laughs> at the 99 British Open for the yeah. record. So, plum bobbing for a must make birdie here. Mm -hmm. 
This was Mark Brooks after that putt didn't go in for the par. Knows what he has to do. Play that has been turned in by Retief Goosen all championship week long. The par four 18th, 466 yards, the toughest at Southern Hills. Uh, you can't have a much better finishing hole than this. Uh, there's a lot of things that work against the players. The big thing probably is that left to right down slope to this green that rises dramatically uh, up the hill. I mean, the bottom line is, is you're trying to hit off a downhill side hill lie to this uphill green, and the green is very difficult. You do not want to hit in the right rough. You don't want a quick hook at either off the tee. And today you can hit the ball underneath the hole in this area here, and it's not a hard two putts. Pretty straight from that area. That would be good. But of course, Mark Brooks needs a, a three, maybe even a two. I mean, you want to think about miracles. And uh, needs a goose and goof up. There is the line for Brooks at the 18th. At his last U.S. Open back in 1977, Johnny Sam Snead called this 18th hole the toughest par four in the world. And by what we saw last night, which occurred on the surface up there, high up on the hill, it takes all of your inner strength to deal with it. Surely one of the hardest four pars in the world without an OB stake or a water hazard that really comes into play. Shot starts down the right hand side. It's drawing some. Oh, yeah. 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 That's not what he wanted, Roger. That's in a really big clump of grass. He thinks it's okay. He thinks it's fine. Roger, every time he's been in the rough, he's had the worst spot you could put it. And I think he's done it again. One underground. Surprising he's going with the driver. I mean, he does have a three shot lead, and there's enough room out there. See what kind of swing he puts on this. This ball starting down the center. This is beautiful, John. This one's just nailed. This is that same shot he hit yesterday, that low line drive chaser. And uh, that has pretty much got the job done. He was in great shape yesterday. He was in great shape with his approach shot before. It happened. Talked earlier about uh, the men, Johnny, who committed major mistakes to force or extend playoffs. Doug Sanders, 70 British Open. Ed Sneed, 79 Masters. Scott Hoke in the playoff in the 89 Masters. Jean Vandeveld, of course, comes to mind at uh, the 99 British Open. But they all went on to lose. But uh, Goosen will probably do what all of them could not. Yeah, he's at a wonderful day uh, still uh, with that bogey at 17 one under par on this tough golf course heavy pressure and Brooks really not shooting a bad score if he could probably won't make par from where he drove it but par for 72 so he shouldn't hang his head too much he just probably shake his head at all the putts goose and made it just just a, a gaggle of goose and putts and most of the crowd here that is been here for this entire 18 holes will be once again centered around 18. And I can't help but think again that uh, it just maybe haunted the green there with what Goosen has been able to do away from that surface at 18. But still some business to be taken care of here and Brooks is out there in the rough. Roger. Well Johnny you're absolutely right. Brooks did believe he had gotten the ball in the fairway when he came over the crest of the hill and can see that the ball was in the rough. Uh, Obviously disappointed. Has 197 yards left to the hole, but that really doesn't mean anything. He, he doesn't have any kind of lie to get this ball on the green. 
Is He's going to have to advance it up short of the green somewhere is all he can do. So disappointing, isn't it? You want to do something heroic. You know, you're behind by three and the golf shot's in. Take out your wedge and hit it over to the left and then wedge it on. And it's like it doesn't fit the scenario. The only chance I got is more wood. Uh, yeah. Fly sort of. Well, he's going to try to force a square peg in a round hole, Roger. We'll see what happens. Yeah, this is hoping against hope here, John. If he can get it out of there with any momentum in the back club, uh, right. it'll be one of the best shots I ever saw in my life. Well, we saw a pretty good forward by Corey Pavin at Shinnecock at 95. This, <laughs> this a little different. Yeah, it's totally different. The fact that he needs a, what, a low line drive, lean in, squirt fade or something. Correct. <laughs> That's really like a bullet so it could chase up the hill. He needs a Texas size shot here. Practice in that little Corey Pavin swing right there, Roger. Do you see that? But the lie in that Bermuda rough is saying probably no can do. Let's we'll see. Maybe he can do it. Get out, get out. Right. Well, he did just about as well as he could do with it, but the ball will run into that front bunker, I believe. It good. did. Of course, it's on the downslope of the bunker now. That was a great shot. I mean, that was that would have gotten onto the green. So watch this. Takes it back a little inside. City so clears real quick and cuts across it. But uh, almost pulled it off. That's a nice shot by Brooks. And then uh, we can see right now a nice drive, almost 280 yards into the wind here at 18. Now he's on the downhill side hill lie, 187 to go and uh, rise. What was that? 23 feet. Really downhill and really side hill, John. This is uh, 187 yards, and five iron. Uh, right side of the green, right center of the green. That'll come back some. Yeah, it might catch up in that row. Watch, it's going to run right down the edge there. That's not really a very good break. That thing is literally running right down the fringe. If it would have been a three inches right, it would have hung up in that rough, and it's in a very tight line, and he is not happy about that at all. You know, you never know, Raj. He could take that lie right there and chunk it three times in a row and come back to his feet. I mean, seriously, folks, if you saw that shot, it is, I hate to say it, but it's a possibility. So for the first time since he exited the 18th green last night, Goosen still will not be there yet, but he gets closer and closer to that surface. I'm going to show you the reaction from Mark Brooks after Goosen's Shot came up short. This is actually after Brooks's shot. And yeah, I took care of that glove. That glove is in shreds, but uh, Goosen's got literally the most nervous shot in golf. It, that shot will make you nervous when you're playing at night by yourself. Why? It's just bare ground, tight lie. You know if you chunk, it's going to come right back down the hill 20 yards. And uh, you just got to hit it flush. And in the process, you might say, well, geez, don't hit a fat last minute. It's called right over the green. Yeah, and if you have not played off uh, these types of sur surfaces in the fairway, that Bermuda, it just grabs your club if you don't get exactly the right hit, the right play on it. Just absolutely cuts the speed down. We saw the pitch shot by Brooks on number 12, Roger. Remember when he chunked it there? Correct. And this, uh, as you say, John, there is there is the potential scenario for this shot to be chunked. It's very thin down in there underneath the shade of those trees. We're looking at the lie right now. <laughs> that is a skimpy lie, huh, Roger? Yes, it is. And on the way up the fairway, Mark Brooks looked at me and he said, well, so much for rough you can play a shot out of, huh? Obviously a reference to uh, the fact that he never really got a shot he could play out of the rough. Every time he missed a fairway. Well, Goosen was not happy. He almost shows no emotion. He showed some on the second shot at 17. He hit it over the green. First time we've seen emotion. Then we saw another emotional reaction to this ball that was coming down the hill. Knowing that he's got to um, appease the little ghost that lives on the green here. Is Goosen owed something here, or is he going to continue to 
give back. Look at this, at Roger. 18. You, think he, you think he doesn't want to take that chunk out of play? <laughs> oh, wow. He must have been listening to me. How much surface before the green? How far is he putting this ball, Raj? This is, this is about 25, 30 yards. Now what. that's a conservative play, John. I'll tell you what, that is a brilliant play, I think. I mean, just he took that scenario took right out of play, didn't he? All my commentary <laughs> went down the drain with a putter. So now he's on the surface in three. I'll tell you, that was a that was a clever shot. More people out there when they're got situations like that should take that Texas wedge. How about this uh, lie? Is this thing on a downslope or just on a level? I couldn't tell. It's a level lie, John, but this is just one of the hardest bunker shots you're ever going to play. Was it like eight, nine feet deep? Yeah, it's about yeah. that. Uh, probably better than 90, yeah. 95 feet. Like, it's yep. uphill, and you have to carry it to the back level, and you have to make yep. a huge swing to get it to carry that far. And if you get it a few grains of sand too thin, you end up in the gallery and over the green. And, to catch it fat, you're in the center of the green. It's just very, very hard to get near the hole. Okay, let's real optimistically look at this. He's got a hole that's out. That puts him at plus one. And Goosen has got a three putt. That's not impossible. Stick, but it's probably aiming at one of those little buildings. Needs a shot of his life, that's for sure, right here. So he's caught it well. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. Match, beautiful shot. Brooks grinding to the end and perhaps learning a little bit of something himself, Johnny, after the uh, events we saw last night. I mean, this was a guy that had packed his locker up. Uh, maybe even Mark Brooks has learned something. Well, Goosen definitely needs to just keep it underneath the hole. The worst scenario would be it to blow it up there uh, really near Mark Brooks, who's got a quick downhiller on Roger. He does. There's not much break in it, though, but this putt of Retief Goose is very, very slow. Yep. Three putts to win this championship and at stake the record $900,000 purse. Exemption into the next 10 U.S. Opens. PGA Tour five years, 10 British Opens, mm. next five Masters, and on and on down the list. It can change your life. As a golfer, just uh, trying to be successful in this business, and it can uh, change the life of a 40 year old Mark Brooks. But right now, 32 year old Retief Goosen is on the edge of all of that. Well, it's sort of going to take a four putt to make it even a possibility for Brooks. Hard enough. Closing it up. Wow. Put it in the cozy range, but um, who's going to be away? That's going to be the big thing here, Roger. I don't know. This That's is going to be close. Mark I Brooks think is it looking might at still it. be Retief Goosen. I think it is, John. Still has two putts from there to put it away. I'll tell you what, he, I guarantee you his mind is thinking of every possible mess up you can do, huh, Roger? Well, I would think he'd be thinking about how to cozy this one right next to the hole. You know, it's such a big lead, but I it just with what happened yesterday, it's probably you probably just having to fight your insides big time right here. I mean, it's really a nothing thing. You leave it a foot short and tap it in, but look at him shaking his head like. Again, still two putts from here. For a final round 70 to win. There it is.
Teeth Goosen from South Africa, the 2001 U.S. Open champion. There have been comebacks in this championship, comebacks from injuries. Ben Hogan comes to mind after the near fatal car accident back in 1950. Uh, comebacks as far as the number of golf shots behind. Arnold Palmer back at Cherry Hills in 1960. But this sport, I don't think, has ever witnessed a comeback like this after the disaster on this hole. And it may sound uh, a little harsh, but in a span of uh, 20 hours, Johnny, from choke to champ, Retief Goosen. Yeah, it was big. He, he played clutch today. Uh, Brooks, uh, David B. Faye, why, why don't you do some commentary here? Look out the window. He's going to putt this putt. Does he have to do that? Well, actually, Johnny, he really doesn't have to do that um, because the uh, but he wouldn't have a score. If he didn't have a score, then uh, he'd still be the runner up. Good putt. What a four for Mark Brooks. He never quit. No one really believed Retief Goosen in his comments last night after the round that he couldn't wait to get back on the golf course. And I'll tell you, that's some good plan, though, really, by both guys after a long week. Brooks shoots 72, Goosen 70. That that is really good plan, and uh, it's just a nice story for Goosen to be able to play that kind of championship golf, like you said, and clutch putting, and Brooks to make it a little interesting there on 17. So, all in all. Great championship. And there might not be a better, more appropriate place than to receive the championship trophy for Ratif Goosen on the 18th green. We'll hear from the new champ when we come back to Southern Hills. Ratif Goosen, the 101st U.S. Open champion. Playoff victory over Mark Brooks. Welcome back to Southern Hills. What has been a great championship week. Unexpected occurrences on this 18th green last night and then the champion Ratif Goosen persevering. Let's go down to Jimmy Roberts. Mark, uh, a game try. Is this less disappointing because of the way it all came about in the first place? Yeah, I would say it is. You know, I mean, he had two great shots yesterday on 18 and uh, he should have won. And, you know, uh, like I think I said yesterday, if I if I'd have finished at five, I don't think there's any way he would have three putted. So, uh, you know, it was just kind of one of those weird days. Uh, I, I got punished severely in the rough today, and uh, that was kind of the difference. You're standing on the 17th tee with a five-stroke deficit. Then it's a three-stroke deficit one hole later. What are you thinking playing the 18th hole? Well, I'm thinking I wanted to hit a good tee shot, and uh, the wind didn't really push the ball right to left much. And uh, did you think you had a choice at that point, a chance at that point, I should say? Well, yeah, three to six. Yep. I mean, it's still possible. Uh, been a lot of sixes made here. You know, I didn't expect him to make one, but uh, just didn't work out. I mean, like I said, I just got locked up in the rough today, and uh, I mean, I didn't even have a chance to play shots. And uh, I think I was in there probably five times and only one hole is able to really move the golf ball. All right, Mark, great week for you. Thanks for stopping by. Congratulations. Let's go back upstairs to Dan Hicks. Thank you, Jimmy. And at the same time, while we admire Retief Goosen, you have to admire uh, Mark Brooks. Yeah, he hung in there. Like he said, he paid the, uh, the penalty for going in the rough. He's not a guy that goes in the rough. He was really hitting it in the fairway and hitting the most greens, number one in greens hit this week going into this uh, playoff round. But uh, Bottom line is he did not hit him in the fairway, and maybe that's where a little bit of tension came out in his game. But Goosen, at the beginning, all those one putts he had just, I think, really uh, took a lot out of Mark Brooks. But uh, it was good play by Goosen. He played like a champion. His rounds were 66, 70, 69, 71, 70. That's great plan. Roger Malpies with the champ. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Retief, congratulations. Uh, with what transpired on the 18th green yesterday afternoon, is it all the sweeter to get it today? Yeah, no, I definitely had to work hard for this one. Uh, it's been a long week. Uh, feels like a year out here. Um, but uh, I played very solid all week, and uh, uh, putter was uh, warm at places, <laughs> except yesterday afternoon. But, uh, um, I mean, what can I say? It's uh, amazing. 
Now, what was going through your mind on 18? We, uh, we putted up from well short of the green, and then we left our first putt short. Tell us what was going through your head. Well, um, when the ball was lying short of the green, it was quite sandy. I didn't have a good lie, so I just hit myself. You know, you want to get it up onto the green somewhere. And um, hit it up there in the first putt. Well, I wasn't going to run it by again. So uh, um, anyway, I, I knew uh, Mark was going to make four from where he was who had a chance. So uh, I said, you know, just make your five and get out of here. Congratulations on being United States Open champion. Thank you very much. Back to you, Dan. Thank you, Roger. Mark Brooks fought to the end. It ended up a two-shot victory for Retief Goosen, the playoff champion in the 101st U.S. Open. Don't forget, in a couple of weeks on Saturday, June 30th, the U.S. Senior Open Championship, Saturday, June 30th. Looking forward to the trip to Peabody, Massachusetts, and Salem Country Club. So for Johnny Miller, Gary Koch, Roger Malpe, Mark Rolfing, and Jimmy Roberts, this is Dan Hicks saying so long from the 101st U.S. Open, the heartland of America, hosting this championship for the third time. First, there was 1958, 1977, but from what everybody saw in 2001, we've never seen anything quite like this one. But Goosen ended up the champ. <laughs>